If it is necessary, it will be Wednesday afternoon at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And Al Leiter will come back and pitch game number six for New York. Bobby Jones on the mound in front of a sellout crowd about set to go on a gorgeous October evening. And set to describe the action for you, here's Bob Murphy. All right, Jerry. Fernando Vina let off the game last night with a base hit. Cardinals went on to score two first inning runs, and they were off and running and winning a ball game. Fernando Vina riding a six-game hitting streak in the postseason. Little guy at one time a New York Met. Left-hand hitter and a very good leadoff batter. Here's the first pitch by Bobby Jones. Ball strike one on the outside corner. Bobby is a touch and field type pitcher who relies on his craftsmanship. His fastball will be in the mid 80s. He relies also on a very good curveball. He'll throw a slider and a change. Seven year veteran Bobby Jones. And the pitch to Fernando Vina. Ground ball, base hit down the right field line, going toward the corner. Vina around first is streaking to second base, a stand up double. Well, Vina let off last night with a single. He does even better here tonight. He leads off with a double, a hard ground ball hit between Todd Zeal and the bag. Well, Bobby Jones is not a hard thrower, but that fastball was clocked at 79 miles an hour, which is substandard even by Jones's measure, and Vina was able to pull that ball between Zeal and the first base back. Bobby Jones really has a job now trying to keep the Cardinals off the board in the first inning. Scoring early is a good way to win a ball game. On the last three games, the first three games of this series, the visiting team has scored two runs in the top of the first each time. Edgar Renteria wielding a hot bat. Stands in, batting number two. But off the mound, Bobby Jones. The throw goes to first, in time for the out. So a sacrifice moves the runner to third. And Tony LaRusso playing for one run here in the first inning. We pause for station identification on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Bottom of the eighth in Seattle. The Mariners still leading the Yankees 6-2. The Jets beat New England 34-17. Giants over Dallas 19-14. More later on WFAN New York. Bob Murphy with Gary Cohen. We're just underway. And very quickly the Cardinals have a runner on third with one man out. J.D. Jim Edmonds, the center fielder, is the hitter. Edmonds had 42 home runs this year. And 108 runs batted in. So Bobby Jones now pitching from the stretch. Edmonds, a left-hand hitter. Well hit fly ball deep to right field. Way back toward the warning track. It may go. It's gone. A two-run homer. Jim Edmonds. A two-run homer for the St. Louis Cardinals. What a different start for Bobby Jones here today. Well hit home run. Deep to right center field, clearing the wall about 380 feet away. And for the fourth consecutive game in this series, the visiting team has scored two runs in the top of the first. And for the St. Louis Cardinals, who had 235 home runs in the regular season and six in three games against Atlanta, that is their first home run in this series. They were wielding a heavy bat when they were in Atlanta. Now the pitch on the way to Will Clark, and the thrill takes it. For a call strike on the outside corner. Well, Bobby Jones gave up 25 home runs in 154 innings this year. During the regular season, the long ball was not his friend. And the long ball was not a friend of Darrell Kyle, the Cardinal pitcher, either. He gave up about 33. High fly ball hit pretty deep to center. Going back, going back, Jay Payton, warning track, makes the catch. Will Clark sending Jay Payton. Back to the warning track in center field. The Mets, def the Mets defensive alignment is brought to you by New York City OTB. We've got your number. Todd Zeal at first, Edgardo Alfonso at second. Mike Boarding at short, and Robert Ventura is playing third. Ray Langford standing in. Two outs and nobody on. Vinny Agbayani in left field, Jay Payton in center, Timo Perez in right. And it's taken off the outside corner, one ball and no strikes. St. Louis jumping to a quick 2-0 lead. And the pitch on the way, missing the outside edge, two balls and no strikes.
Langford is three for six in this series. And a 2-0 pitch. Missing high, ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Ray Langford, a left-hand hitter and a good hitter. Langford hit 253 during the regular season. And he takes the pitch over for a call strike. But he had power. He had 26 home runs and 65 runs batted in. Now a three and one count on Ray Langford. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. So a full count now on Ray Langford at three and two. Fernando Tatis, the third baseman, is the on deck hitter. The payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. He got him with a high hard one. So the inning is over, but the Cardinals do damage. They score two runs. Two hits. They were both extra base hits. And nobody left on. The middle of inning one is Shea. The Cardinals two. The Mets are coming to bat on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Darrell Kyle is the pitcher tonight for St. Louis. Kyle, a 20-game winner this season. He had a 19-game season while Pitching for the Houston Astros. Darrell Kyle lost to the Mets and to Mike Hampton. Kyle pitched well, but he was outpitched by Mike Hampton in the opening ballgame. Darrell is a 31-year-old right-hander. He's a big guy, 6'5", 212 pounds. Had a couple of tough years in Colorado. Was happy to escape there and wind up with the St. Louis Cardinals. Ebo Perez, the leadoff batter for the New York Mets. And Kyle's first pitch is over. Calls strike one. Now the pitch on the way to the left-hand hitter. He takes a breaking ball outside and low. One ball and one strike. Timo has three for 14 in the league championship series. Very exciting young player to watch. Just 23 years old. And the pitch by Kyle. Well hit fly ball. Deep to right center field. On the run, Jim Evans. Can't get it. It bounces over the wall. A ground rule double for Timo Perez. On one hop off the warning track, it flew over the right center field fence. So Timo Perez continues the excitement. Well, we keep seeing new aspects of Timo's game every day. Yesterday was a terrific throw, throwing out a runner at the plate as he gunned down Will Clark in the sixth inning. And today, terrific gap power. That ball took a hop on the warning track at the 396 mark. Timo Perez keeps showing more and more speed and arm and defense. Marching ability and power as well. Boy, he's fun to watch. He can participate in every aspect of this game. Here's Edgardo Alfonso hitting a 357. Fonzi 5 for 10 in the series. He now has hit safely in nine straight postseason games. Ground ball, beats hit. Down the right field line, going toward the corner. Perez around third. Perez will score. Fonzi goes into second with a double. The back doubles by Timo Perez and Eduardo Alfonso. The Mets very quickly have a run back. Well, in game one, the Mets jumped on Kyle quickly. Perez opened that game with a double. Alfonso walked and Piazza doubled in a run. Here, practically the same scenario. Back-to-back -back doubles by Perez and Alfonso. And Eduardo continues to drive in runs at eight RBIs now in seven postseason games. Mike Piazza batting third in the order. Piazza will stand in now. The tying run is on second base. What an electric start to this ball game. The Cardinals had a double by Vigna and a home run by Edmonds. Mets now have back-to-back -back doubles by Perez and Alfonso. And Mike Piazza is standing in. Piazza four for ten in the series. And the pitch inside low, it's ball one. Remember what we said about Kyle on three days rest in his career, a 6.66 ERA. This is not a comfortable situation for him coming back on short rest. Yeah, he's won four and lost eight. Pitching on short rest. He has to count heels to bat around, waiting on Daryl Kyle. Brink slider way outside in the dirt. 
Two balls and no strikes to Mike Piazza. Robin Ventura, the cleanup batter, is on deck. Darrell Kyle, a 31-year-old right-hander, he has won 112 Major League ball games. Had one terrific year at Houston, 19 and 7. Just a no-hitter against the New York Mets in the old Astrodome. So now Alfonso is the tying run on second. Nobody out. We're in the opening inning of the game. And a 2-0 pitch. Driving here to right field. Racing back. It's going to be over the head of Drew, the right fielder. Rounding third and being held there is Alfonso. Going to second by Piazza. A double, a wicked line drive that fooled the right fielder Drew. Was over his head and bounced off the wall. Alfonso obviously thought it might be caught, and he held up. Well, that ball was hit so hard, Alfonso couldn't tell, but Drew never had a chance on that ball. Even had he taken a perfect break back on it, it was going to be over his head. Piazza, who hits the ball as hard to right field as any right-hand batter maybe ever, just drilled that ball one hop against the bullpen fence, and Drew never had a prayer. Three doubles in a row for the New York Mets. Now another double, and they'd have the lead. They started out behind 2-0 here in the first inning. Robin Ventura standing in against Darrell Kyle. Runners on second and third. And the pitch on the way. Outside high. One ball, no strike. Well, Eduardo Alfonso said after the game yesterday that maybe the Mets didn't come out with enough passion. They didn't have as much at stake as they did in other postseason games. I think, Bob, so far from what we've seen, looks like the passion is back. Boy, I'll say it is. Three consecutive doubles. Ventura is the batter. And a high fly ball. Deep to right center field. Way out toward the wall. Off the wall. An extra base hit. Alfonso scores. Piazza scores. And the Mets have a 3 to 2 lead. They have four doubles in a row. Four two base hits in a row. The Mets now have a 3 to 2 lead. Dave Duncan, the pitching coach. Is on his way to the mound. Can you say teeing off? Darrell Kyle has only thrown a couple of breaking balls here in the first inning. Otherwise, all fastballs, and that one was right down the heart of the plate to Robin Ventura. He put a good stroke on it to hit the base of the fence in right center field. Four consecutive doubles to start the first inning. That is tremendous for the Mets. Coming right back after Edmonds' two-run homer at the top of the inning. I don't think we've ever seen the Mets start a game off with four two-base hits. Four doubles in a row. The ball, the double hit by Mike Piazza was hit so hard, it was just a screaming line drive. The sail over the head of J.D. Drew, he had no chance. And the ball hit by Ventura, for a while I thought it was going to go over the fence in right center. Now Tazeal will stand in. Four doubles in a row. Ties a National League Championship Series record. Now the pitch to Tazeal. Low outside, one ball, no strike. And no team's ever had five straight doubles in a National League regular season game. The last time a team had four straight in a regular season game was in 97. The Cardinals did that. Only one team in Major League history has ever had five straight doubles, and that was the Washington Senators in 1934. Boy, that goes a long way back. Breaking ball outside and low in the dirt. Nice job by Carlos Hernandez. Mets three and Cardinals two were only in the first inning. And that record for consecutive doubles is at any time of the game. I don't know if any team's ever had four straight doubles to start a game before. Well, I don't remember ever seeing it. I know that. So Ventura is on second. He double driving two runs in. Mets now have a three to two lead. All of this and we're still in the first inning. Cardinals had a double and a home run to score twice. And the pitch down to Todd Zeal. A strike call in the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. Quality counts. The United Association of Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, and Sprinkler Fitters do the job right the first time. Visit their website at ua.org. Ventura with a leadoff second. The infield and the outfield straight away. Ground ball hit toward third. Fielded by Tatis. He holds the runner at second. Throws to first in time for the out. So there's the first out. Number 50. Number 50. 
The number six hitter is Vinny Agbayani. Vinny has had an eight straight postseason game, including the one late last year. So Vinny strides to the plate. Vinny five for 11 in the league championship series. Vinny at 455. So Vinny Agbayani standing in against Daryl Kyle. Mets three and the Cardinals two. The pitch, breaking ball a little outside. One ball and no strikes. Kyle has gone to his breaking ball now after the best tore up the fastball. Ventura will lead away from second base. And the pitch thrown way inside. That almost hit Vinny Agbayani had to get out of the way in a hurry. Well, if Kyle can't get his curveball over, that really changes his game. He usually has one of the best curveballs in baseball, but if he can't throw it for strikes, his fastball is very straight and can be very hittable. Yeah, when you talk about good curveball pitchers in the league, you always hear the name Darrell Kyle. There's the curveball, but it's out of the strike zone. Three balls and no strikes. Well, he's throwing a big breaker right now, but he doesn't have very good command of it, and so the Mets best advised to lay off it and sit on the fastball. Jay Payton is taking some phantom swings in the on-deck circle. Ventura is on second with one man away. Three runs are in. Mets lead three to two. And the pitch. High fly ball. He beats the center field. It's way back. It might go. And it is off the top of the wall for an extra base hit. In the score, Ventura. Egg by Yanni on second with a run scoring double. Five doubles for the Mets in the first inning. And Egg by Yanni just missed the home run. Just missed the home run. Well, Benny was sitting on a fastball on 3-0, and oh, and again, Kyle threw it right down the middle, and Benny tattooed it. He hit it 408 feet to center field, and that ball hit about two feet from the top of the fence, way beyond the reach of Jim Edmond. The Mets are just loving Daryl Kyle here in the first inning. Five doubles here in the first inning. The last by Benny Agmayani, and now the hitter is Jay Payton. Any warm-up action yet in that Cardinal bullpen? Not yet. Not yet. Kind of surprising. Now here's Jay Payton standing in. Payton two for 11 of the LCS. And the pitch is a breaking ball over for a call strike. Four runs on five doubles. Here in the opening inning of the game. Mets lead four to two. They'll be hoping that Bobby Jones and come back to the mound in a good groove. Big off play, throw to second, not in time. Agbayani diving back to the bag. Boy, you talk about a flurry of action. First inning, four runs in on five doubles. Two of those doubles looked like they were going out of the ballpark. Darrell Kyle now pitching from the stretch. And a high fly ball down the left field line. It, it may go foul. Let's watch. And it is a foul ball. Foul ball at the last moment. And Jay Payton didn't miss a home run by very much. He hit that right down the left field line. It looked like it was fair most of the way. Yeah, it just sailed away at the last moment. Went above the auxiliary scoreboard. Maybe about one or two seats outside the foul pole. Jay was trying to give it the body English, but couldn't quite pull the Carlton fist. Boy, he sure tried. He was twisting and twisting, trying to keep it fair. It went about, foul by about a foot. Now the count is strike two on Jay Payton. Mets came very close to a two-run homer there. Mets lead four to two. We're in the first inning of the game. What have we got here? Now the pitch to Payton. Wild swing out of he struck him out. Peyton chased a wild pitch that time. Way out of the strike zone. Now two men away. Number 17, Mike Bordy. And Mike Bordy, the number eight hitter, comes to bat. Four runs on five hits. I wonder if they'll pitch to Bordick here. They might want to walk him and face Bobby Jones, a very weak hitter. Bobby comes out to the on-deck circle. Well, they're going to pitch to him. So they're going to go after Mike Bordick. The number eight hitter, the shortstop. Here's the pitch. 
breaking ball to start him off in the slow outside. Yeah, he may, he may not, ball, no strength. Sorry, Bob, he may not get a fastball this at bat. I don't think he will. Why would you throw him one with a pitcher waiting on deck? Morning, the first half of the year, had a terrific year hitting. Then he tailed off the second half. Broken bat, ground ball out over second base. Fielded by Vigna, the throw to first is in time for the outside retire. Vigna made a good play going to the high second to throw out Mike Bordick. Four runs, five hits, one man left on. After one inning at Shea, the Mets four and the Cardinals two on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Sports Radio 66, WFAN. <laughs> doubles in an inning, a new league championship series record, but five extra base hits in an inning is also a new championship series record. The last time a team had four extra base hits in an inning was Baltimore in 1997, but five in an inning, nobody had done that before, and the Mets just pulled it off with five for a sitting double. There were seven hits in the inning. Both hits by the Cardinals were extra base hits. They had a Fernando Vina double and a home run by Jim Edmonds. So now it's the second inning, believe it or not. And Fernando Tatis, the third baseman, will stand in against Bobby Jones. Bobby was hit hard in the first inning. And so was Daryl Kyle. So what will happen as we go along? Who knows? Here's the windup by Bobby and the pitch. Too high, ball one. And Bobby, both, te uh, Bob, both teams were very aggressive in that first inning. Bobby Jones threw only 12 pitches, and he gave up two extra base hits. Daryl Kyle threw only 21 pitches to eight batters. So everybody's going up there swinging. Boy, they sure are. 1 0 pitches, a swing, and a miss by Tatis. Fernando Tatis, the hitter. Tatis with two hits in eight times at bat in the LCS. Fernando Tatis is a power hitter. He can hit a long ball. Last year, he was a real good power hitter. And the pitcher on the way moves him off the plate. Two balls and one strike. Boy, both teams would love to win this game. If the Cardinals win, the Mets have to go back to St. Louis. For the Mets not to return, they have to win tonight and tomorrow night. The 2-1 pitch. Fly ball hit hard. Deep to center field. On the run, going back Jay Payton. And who caught it? Pete Perez makes the catch on the warning track in deep right center field. Everybody is hitting the daylights out of the ball. Yeah, it was a terrific play by Timo Perez. He was calling all the way. Cut a step in front of Jay Payton on the warning track in deep right center. Very nice play by Timo. He had to go a long way to get that ball. Gary, that's where that speed means so much. Well, you got two guys out there in Payton and Perez who can run as well as anybody on this field. They went a long, long way, and they both got over there. Perez made the catch on the warning track in distant right center field. J.D. Drew is the hitter. Left-hand hitter with good power for the St. Louis Cardinals. And Drew takes the first pitch. Ball one. Everybody is just hitting the daylights out of it. Now Bobby Jones cranking it up. And a call strike in the outside corner. Well, often a starting pitcher will settle down after a, an outburst like this. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't look good right now for either one of these guys. Sure doesn't. But neither manager has made any move toward his bullpen. Fly ball hit high in the air. Now, this is not deep. Shallow left center field. Jay Payton calling for it. Payton makes the catch. Two bit away. There's a lot of new stuff in tomorrow's Newsday. Look for Jumble, Dave Berry, and the new expanded Monday Business and Technology Report. Plus an extra big action-packed sports session. Get Newsday tomorrow. The out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by Chase Manhattan Bank. The right relationship is everything. Carlos Hernandez, the catcher, is now the batter, hitting number eight in the batting order. Fastball over for a call strike. The Yankee game is now over in Seattle. The Mariners beat the Yankees by a score of 6-2. to two. Freddie Garcia, the winner, Diddy Nagel, the loser. Edgar Martinez and John Olerud had home runs. 
second curveball missing inside. One ball and one strike. Yankees used Denny Nagel, Jeff Nelson, Jason Grimsley, Dot Gooden, and David Cohn pitched an inning. And he got them out. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball, a good one by Bobby Jones. One ball, two strikes. So Edgar Martinez and John Olerud had home runs. The 1-2 one, pitch. Low outside, two balls and two strikes. Yeah, those home runs came back to back after Alex Rodriguez had a base hit to give the Mariners the lead. Final score, Seattle six. And the New York Yankees two. Right here, the count is two and two on Carlos Hernandez. High fly ball hit the right center. On the run is Perez. And he makes the catch to repair the side. Perez makes the grab in right center. Three fly balls part of the outfield to retire the side. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. In the middle of the second at Shea, the Mets four, the Cardinals two, on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Gary, the game in Seattle, won by the Mariners six to two. After four hours and 14 minutes to play. That is a new LCS record by one minute. The Yankees and Orioles have played 4-13 in a game in 96. And they didn't even play the bottom of the ninth today in Seattle, and it took them four hours and 14 minutes. Mets have already had a four-hour game in the postseason. Well, I'll tell you what, the way this one started out, it may challenge that. Oh, and how. <laughs> so now it's the last half of the second. Bobby Jones will take his turn at bat. Eight men came to bat in the first for the Mets. They scored four runs. They had five doubles. So eight men batted. So now Bobby Jones leads off in the home half of the second. And the pitch by Darrell Kyle is down the middle for a call strike. Very comfortable evening at Shea Stadium. Cardinals in the outfield playing Bobby Jones to hit the ball to right field. Left fielder Langford way over in left center. And a fastball strike call to the outside corner. Cardinal pitchers rave about the throwing arm of Daryl Kyle. They say he's absolutely tireless. That's not unusual at all for him to throw 140 pitches in a game. Breaking ball in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. And it is bounced back on three days rest. Again, difficult today as it has been at other times for him. Yeah, we pointed out his record is four and eight when pitching on three days rest. So it hasn't really worked well for him. But really, without Garrett Stevenson to go to, Tony La Russa did not have a choice in this series but to bring Kyle back in game four. Now the one-two pitch. Looping fly ball into short center field race again. It's the center fielder Edmonds, and he makes the grab. Edmonds playing very shallow, able to catch that in short center field. Number two. So one out and nobody on. We pause for station identification on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Curtis Martin, 143 yards and three TDs as the Jets meet New England 34-17. The Giants top Dallas 19-14. More later on WFAN New York. Bob Murphy with Jerry Cohen, 4-2, Mets lead. We're playing in the last of the second. Timo Perez had a double to deep right center, leading off the last half of the first for New York. Boy, Timo has been exciting. Only 5'9". Bluffing at a bun, and the pitch is over a call strike one. It's a commitment to quality that wins games. A determination to do things right. At Amico, that's our focus, too. No matter which team you're on, we'll give you the very best. Perez lays off. One ball and one strike. Sellout crowd at the old ballpark in Queens. And the pitch on the way. Ground ball foul hit down the third baseline. That goes in front of Cookie Rojas, the veteran third base coach. Well, that was a pretty good idea by Perez with Tatis playing in against the threat of the bunt. Timo trying to slap one by him over the bag. Timo will try a lot of different things. He has that great play that he uses where he runs up in the batter's box and slaps at the ball, gets that running start toward first, and more often than not, he can beat that out for an infield hit. Anytime he can bunt it fair, he's got a great chance to beat it out. Swinging a foul ball against his leg. 
Yeah, one ball is his strength. And the advantage of that running up in the box and swinging at it is if you foul it off, it's not strike three. And you have the effect of the bunt getting that head start to first base like a left-hand hitter does on a drag bunt, and yet you're swinging at the ball. Timo really has the natural instincts to play the game of baseball and play it right. Darrell Kyle, the veteran right-hander, one two pitch line drive toward the gap left center field that's going to be in for a base hit grabbed on the run by ray langford he'll hold him to a single good play by langford the cardinal left fielder and timo is now two for two a single and a double and two times in bat well there, there's the first single after five doubles and timo using the whole field he pulled the ball to right center his first time up went the other way with two strikes and hit it to left center this time Edgardo Alfonso, the most talented number two hitter, standing in. Fonzie slashed the ground double right down the right field line into the corner to drive in a run in the first inning. It was his eighth RBI. So now the infield and outfield are straight away. The pitch by Kyle, a letter high fastball call, strike one. Kyle has a lifetime record against New York of 10 wins and four losses. So he has done well against the Mets over the years. Kyle is a tall right-hander. In the month of September, Darrell Kyle won five and lost none. He was on a terrific roll for Tony La Russa. And the pitch to the runner goes, swing and a miss. Throw to second the slide, stolen base. Timo shows another aspect of this game, and he steals second. Fonzie tried to cover for him, swung at the pitch, but he missed it. And Timo Perez slides in with a stolen base. And that is the Mets' first stolen base in this series. Not a bad throw by Carlos Hernandez, simply not in time. Now, Timo got a big jump, and Alfonso swinging through that pitch certainly helped delay Hernandez from getting rid of that ball. Now Hernandez goes out to talk with Daryl Kyle. Four to two, a Mets lead by two runs. Cardinals had a double and a home run to score twice. In the top of the first, Mets came back and had five two-base hits to score four runs in the last half of the first inning. Now they have Timo in scoring position with one down, and Edgardo Alfonso is the hitter. Darrell Kyle getting a sign now from Carlos Hernandez. Turns and throws to second, not in time. Tebow had to dive headlong to get back. Mets have done much better in this series with runners in scoring position than they did against the Giants. And in that first inning, the Mets were four for seven with runners in scoring position. Well, you're not going to do it any better than they did in the first inning. Strike count on Edgardo Alfonso. And a fly ball hit the center field. An easy play for Edmonds. He drifts back. He's under it. He makes the catch. Perez tags up. He'll race to third after the catch. So Perez goes to third. Two men away. And Mike Piazza will be the hitter. And that's a big base. Normally taking third on the second out is not a big play. But with Darrell Kyle and the number of curve balls that he throws, and with Carlos Hernandez suffering with a bad back, there's always the chance that Kyle's going to bounce one that'll go to the backstop. And so having that runner at third base with two out is very important. Piazza hit a screaming line drive over the head of right fielder J.D. Drew for a two-base hit. Now Mike stands in for his second time at bat. Look at this. They're going to walk him, Bob. First base is open, so they are going to walk him. They'll bring up Robin Ventura. Well, Piazza's always had a lot of success against Kyle. Three for four in this series and 344 lifetime. But then again, Ventura hit the tar out of the ball his first time up tonight. He certainly did. He doubled in a deep right center field. He almost had a home run. So we're watching now as they intentionally walk Mike Piazza. Mets will have first and third with two men down. Well, Mike was held in check in the game yesterday at that big double play in the first inning. But he's 5 for 11 in this series. So he is swinging the bat much better now than he was in September or in the series against the Giants. Now Piazza goes down to first base. And Robin Ventura will try to add to the Mets total. Ventura just missed the home run 
with a double off the wall in deep right center field. Four. Robinson Ventura. Ventura now two for ten in the series. Robin, a left-hand hitter, faces Darrell Kyle. Now the Mets have Timo Perez on third and Mike Piazza on first. Two men away in the last half of the second inning. Kyle getting his sign. And the pitch on the way, high outside. One ball and no strikes. Godzeal is now the on-deck hitter. That's four runs, six hits. And the Cardinals, two runs and two hits. Mets have to win tonight and tomorrow night to avoid a trip back to St. Louis. Mets lead the series two games to one. High outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Weather forecast calls for some rain perhaps tomorrow. Mets will hope that it skips back. Two balls and no strikes on Robin Ventura. Jim Edmonds playing a stride to right center. Edmonds, the Cardinal center fielder, is a terrific defensive ball player. Now Ventura waiting. Had a step to third and a fake to first. Nothing going on. Darrell Kyle just wanting to check it out. He barely stepped toward third. It's almost like Turk Wendell's third to first move. Very close to being a balk. A balk would bring a run in. Now first and third, Ventura waiting. The pitcher on the way. Third ball, but it misses. Ball three, and the count goes to 3-0 and on Robin Ventura. Todd Zeal, the on-deck hitter. Mets have been spitting on that curveball the whole game so far, forcing Kyle to come in with the fastball. Now let's see if they give Robin a green light on 3-0. He doesn't usually like to swing too much at 3-0. Three, Three balls, no strikes. The pitch on the way. Outside, ball four. Bases are loaded, and Todd Zeal will come up. So they gave an intentional walk to Mike Piazza, and now Ventura is walked. So the bases are loaded. A long hit right here would really inflict some damage. Todd Zeal grounded out third to first in the opening inning. Todd has three career home runs against Daryl Kyle. And Todd has been swinging the bat quite well in this series. Five hits in 12 times at bat. We'll get some warm-up action now in the Cardinal bullpen. Mike Dimlin getting up. Mike Dimlin, a right-hander. Now Zeal steps back out of the batter's box for a moment. The big crowd is really into it right now. Mets have a 4-2 to two lead and a great chance to expand on it. Two men away. Now the stretch by Darrell Kahn. And the pitch. Breaking ball over, knee high for a strike call. That was a good-looking pitch by Darrell Kyle. That's the best curveball he's thrown so far. Sure is. Kimlin trying to get ready in a hurry of that Cardinal bullpen. The infield straight away, so is the outfield. The lead runner at third is Perez. And the pitch is over, strike two call. Now Kyle gets ahead of Todd Zeal with a two-strike count. Timo Perez is on third. Mike Piazza on second. Robin Ventura is on first. The base is loaded, but two men away. Mets need to make something good happen right here. The stretch by the right-hander. And the pitch. Line drive down the left field line with a stay fair. Fair ball. Base hit into the corner. Perez has scored. Piazza has scored. Two runs are in, and the Mets have a 6-2 to two lead. Brazil behind on the count. Two strikes. Lined the ball down the left field line into the corner. A two-base hit. Six doubles in this game now for New York. Both Perez comes around to score. 
as does Mike Piazza. Big mistake by Daryl Kyle ahead of the count 0-2. For the first time of the game, he decided to come sidearm to the right-hand batter, and he hung a curveball right over the heart of the plate. And Todd Zeal made no mistake and ripped that ball into the left field corner. And the Mets are really tattooing Daryl Kyle. Now the Mets have six runs on seven hits. Six of their seven hits have been doubles. That was an ugly pitch. <laughs> Minnie Mayetti is the hitter. And a strike call in the inside corner. Agmayani doubled against the center field wall. He drove in a run in the first inning. Mets now have six runs on seven hits. Darrell Kyle checks the runners at second and third. Hit hard, foul ball down the left field line. I gotta tell you, Bob, it's awfully surprising that Darrell Kyle is still in this game. Tony La Russa knows if this game gets away and one more hit and it could be gone, He's facing a three-to-one deficit and facing Mike Hampton tomorrow night. Right now, a base hit would make it an eight-to-two ball game. This would really open up a commanding lead if they get a base hit right here. Two runners are in scoring position. Ventura is on third, and Zeal is on second. Fastball high, taken by Benny Agbayani. One ball, two strikes. What an amazing display of two base hits. Six of their seven hits have been doubles. Darrell Kyle, the 31-year-old right-hander, a 20-game winner. Now the one pitch on the way. High pop fly. Might be into the crowd. Yes, it will run out of room. It goes into the crowd. No play for Fernando Tatis. So the count holding at one and two now on Vinny Agbayani. Vinny having a terrific postseason. Counting a game late last year, Vinny has sit safely in nine straight postseason games. The one-two pitch in the dirt, but handled by Carlos Hernandez. Good play by Hernandez there to save a run. There's that bouncing curveball we were talking about before, and Hernandez playing with two ruptured discs to them in his back, really had to slide over in a hurry. He's going to need surgery on that back when the season is over. And Tell you what, the way he's had to stretch for Daryl Kyle and stretch earlier in the playoffs for Rick Ankeel, that surgery can't come fast enough. This will be in good shape, particularly if Bobby Jones can get into a good groove. He was much better in the second inning. Gave up a double and a home run in the first inning. Two and two on Vinny Agbayani. Line drive out to a short center field, dropping in for a base hit. One run will score. Here's the throw coming home to slide, and he is out at the plate. Out at the plate. Todd Zeal is gunned down. A base hits a short center field for Benny Agbayani. Scores Robin Ventura. And Todd Zeal is gunned down at home. So the inning is over. The Mets score three runs. Three hits. And one man left on. At the end of two innings now, it is the Mets 7 and the Cardinals 2 on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. We'll be going to the third inning here at Shea. Gary, it's been a long time since we've had a ball game with so much offensive explosion in the first two innings. Well, the Mets felt as though they didn't put out their best effort yesterday. Boy, if they put out an effort in the first two innings tonight, seven runs and eight hits against Daryl Kyle. Six doubles in the first two innings, and unbelievably, Kyle is going to bat for himself, leading off in the third inning. I don't know what Tony La Russa is thinking. His ball club is in danger of falling behind three games to one with game five tomorrow and facing Mike Hampton, one of the best pitchers in the game. He can't believe he's going to stick with Kyle, who's been flat awful so far. Well, I'm convinced that he likes his ball club offensively. He thinks they'll score a lot of runs. That may be, but he's got to have some pitcher to stop the other team. And so far, Kyle has been just horrible. But Kyle's going to bat, and the Mets will take that. They'd love to hit against him some more of the way he's going tonight. Kyle was 0-for-1 in his game one start. And the pitch by Bobby Jones right down the middle for a strike, nothing and one. Jones got off to a shaky start himself. A double for Fernando Vina, a two-run homer for Jim Edmonds. But since then, Jones has retired five in a row, although some of them have been rather scary. The 0-1 to Kyle, and he misses high. One ball, one strike. Mets now with a 7-2 lead as we play in the top of the third inning, game four of the National League Championship Series. 
The outfield shallow and toward right against Kyle, a right-hand batter. And Jones delivers, and he misses outside. Two balls and a strike. Fernando Vina on deck. And then Edgar Renteria here in the top of the third. A couple of days past the full moon, rising above the big scoreboard in right field. It's been a pleasant moon for the Mets tonight. The 2-1 to Kyle and a high pop-up on the third base side. Cutting across toward the line is Bordick on the outfield grass. And Bordick makes the grab. That retires Kyle, one man down. Six in a row retired by Bobby Jones. And now up to the top of the batting order for Fernando Vino. Escape to the splendor of the Connecticut woods at Magnificent Foxwoods Resort Casino. Call 1-800-PLAY-BIG to find out more. Vino ripped a double between Todd Zeal and the first base bag in the opening inning. For Vino, the second straight day that he's led off the ball game with a base hit. There have been four games played in this series, and in each of the four, the visiting team has scored two runs in the top of the first inning. When the Mets scored four runs in the bottom of the first, it marked the first time in this series that the home team had had a lead. Mets took the lead early and held it in games one. Game one, they were tied a couple of times in game two, but never fell behind. Pitch to Vini taken outside 1-0, and yesterday the Cardinals scored early, and the Mets never caught up. And so the Mets in the lead now, and it's been a rare good day for the home team in these four games. Ventura in on the grass at third, the 1-0 to Vina, missing high with a fastball, two balls and no strength. Jones had a couple of starts against the Cardinals during the regular season. He pitched on a miserable July day here at Shea against St. Louis and pitched one of his best games of the year, a complete game, his only complete game of the regular season. The 2-0 pitch called strike, letter high, 2-1. Beat the Cardinals 4-2 on the 30th of July with that complete game four hitter, struck out nine was hit harder in his start in St. Louis in September. A no decision game in which he gave up four runs in five innings. Two and one to Vina. Jones delivers. He runs up his little bunt, takes the pitch high. He didn't offer at it. Three balls and a strike. The last time a team had four doubles in a single inning in an NLCS game was game five between the Pirates and the Braves in 1992 with Steve Avery pitching for Atlanta. Gary Reedus, Barry Bonds, Jeff King, and Lloyd McClendon have the double. The 3-1 pitch called strike three and two. Boy, Bonds was in the middle of that rally. He didn't have too many hits in that series or any other postseason series. But the Mets broke that record tonight with five doubles in the first inning. Three and two to Vigny with one out and nobody on. Bobby Jones delivers, swing, and a miss, he got it. Threw him a changeup on three and two, and Jones strikes out Vigna for the second out. Second strikeout for Bobby Jones, and he's settling in now. He's set down seven in a row after a rocky start, now pitching with a five-run lead. Two out and nobody on, here's Edgar Renteria. Renteria laid down a sacrifice bunt in the opening inning. He's had a very good series. Renteria six for 14 in the first three games. Has three hits in game two, and then two more yesterday, and a couple of RBIs. Right-hand batter, Jones delivers, fastball on the inside corner of the strike, and Bobby's starting to get the good location with that fastball, working inside and out. That's what he was doing last Sunday here at Shea against the Giants during his memorable one-hit performance. Here's the 0-1 to Renteria, low and away, one and one. You know, it's amazing. It had been 33 years since the pitcher had thrown a one-hit shutout on a postseason game, and now it's happened twice in a week. First Jones and then Roger Clemens yesterday in Seattle. Clemens not only pitched a one-hitter, he struck out 15. Curveball, bounced foul to plate by Renteria, came off his leg, one ball, two strikes. And apparently A-Rod wasn't too happy. He felt like he came up and in a little bit too much. I think we've heard that story before. I think we have, too. <laughs> Difference is A-Rod didn't get hit in the head like Mike Piazza did right before the All-Star break. Now the big crowd of better than 55,000 rising to its feet, hoping Bobby Jones can fashion his second straight 1-2-3 inning. He's ahead on Renteria, one ball, two strikes. In center field, Jay Payton playing a couple of strides toward left center. Jones working from the first base side of the rubber. 1-2 to Renteria, check swing foul ball back into the crowd, still 1-2. The one hitter that Jones threw against the Giants last Sunday was his first ever postseason appearance. Bobby, who labored long and hard for the Mets during their bad years in the mid-90s, did not get a chance to pitch in the postseason last year. He was not on the roster. He has come back with a vengeance this postseason. 
One two to Renteria. Curveball bounced foul up the third baseline and off the photo box. Last year, Bobby was hurt for most of the year. Came back late in the season to make a few relief appearances, but not impressive enough at that point to make the postseason roster. Even though the Mets carried 11 pitchers in the postseason last year and only 10 this year. This year, second half of the season, Bobby Jones reestablished himself as a major part of the Mets rotation. And it was a no-brainer he'd be around this time. One and two to Renteria. Jones delivers, hit foul back onto the screen, and Renteria with a long turn at bat holds in at one and two. Tomorrow night, game number five here at Shea, Mike Hampton for the Mets. Pat Henkin goes for the Cardinals. Henkin, like Hampton, won 15 games during the season. But unlike Hampton, this will be Henkin's first start for the Cardinals in the postseason. So he's been sitting around for a while. One two to Renteria and a high pop up shallow left field. Tough play. In comes Akbayani. He'll get under it. And Akbayani makes the catch that retires the side. And Bobby Jones has set down eight Cardinals in a row. Nothing across. Middle of the third now at Shea. The Mets seven. St. Louis two. On the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Third inning, Jay Payton will lead off against Daryl Kyle, who's given up seven runs and eight hits in the first two innings. And it remains on to pitch in the third. The long man for the Cardinals during this postseason has been the rookie right-hander Britt Ream. Right now, you'd have to guess that if this series goes to a sixth game in St. Louis on Wednesday, that Ream would start that game for the Cardinals. But it really is incomprehensible that Tony La Russa is remaining with Daryl Powell on a night where he clearly does not have it, and the Mets have been belting him all around the ballpark to the tune of a 7-2 lead. Jay Payton struck out in the first inning. Jay barely missed a home run, a ball that landed two seats foul above the auxiliary scoreboard, and then Powell struck him out on a curve ball in the dirt. Jay is 2-12 for 12 in this series, including a home run. And the pitch by Kyle, fastball and a high pop-up into shallow left center field. Angling in his Langford, he'll get under it. And the left fielder puts it away. One pitch and one retired in the home third inning. A pause for station identification on the WFAN Mets radio network. Seattle stays alive in the ALCS with a 6-2 win over the Yankees. Football, Jets over New England, 34-17. The Giants beat Dallas, 19-14. More later on WFAN New York. Gary Cohen, Bob Murphy with you from Shea Stadium in New York. Game four of the National League Championship Series. We're in the bottom of the third inning. The Mets lead the Cardinals 7-2, and the Mets lead the series two games to one. Mike Bordick up with one out and nobody on. Takes inside a fastball, 1-0. Bordick hit a ground ball that appeared headed toward the middle in the first inning, but Fernando Vina flashed over, made a nice play, and threw Bordick out. Mike is now hitless in seven at-bats in this series. The 1-0 pitch and a curveball taken low, 2-0. Portic's thumb is still a little bit sore. Remember back in game one, he was hit by a Mike James pitch off that right thumb. Did not start game two. Came in late in that game and has started the last couple, but that thumb not 100%. The 2-0 pitch and a curveball missing inside. And Kyle behind 3-0 with the pitcher Bobby Jones waiting on deck. Portic now 2 for 19 in the postseason. He did not have a good month of September either. Kyle 3-0 pitch, right down the middle for a strike, 3-1. and one. Kyle has walked two. One of those was an intentional walk. He has struck out one. He had only one strikeout in his game one start against the Mets in St. Louis. The 3-1 to Bordick. Lashed foul off to the right. That'll go into the stands out of play, 3-2. and two. Kyle, for the season, struck out 192 batters in 232 innings. That's seven and a half strikeouts per nine innings. But in his complete game victory over the Mets in September in St. Louis, he struck out only two. And in his seven innings against the Mets in game one, he struck out only one. So against the Mets, he has not been a big strikeout pitcher this year. Here's the 3-2 to Bordick. Fastball grounded to third base. Two hopper handled by Tatis. Makes the long throw and plenty of time to get Bordick, and that's the second out. So two up and two set aside. Bobby Jones will come to the plate. Bobby hit a pretty good-looking fly ball to center field his first job up. Jones has not hit a whole lot this year, just two for 46. But Bobby Jones has a claim to fame. He is the last net pitcher to hit a home run. That came in the home opener of the 1999 season against the Florida Marlins. Bobby hit a home run off Levon Hernandez. The pitch, fastball, knee high for a strike, nothing at once. 
Bobby didn't pitch too many games in 1999 for the Mets, but he did pitch the home opener, and he did hit a home run, and nobody's done it since. The 0 1 from Kyle, and a curveball taken low, one ball, one strike. Demo Perez is already two for two and has already scored two runs in this game, is standing on deck. The 1 1 to Jones, curveball, swing and a miss, and Kyle out in front, one ball and two strikes. Full house here at Shea, and they've been in a party mood so far. Mets have been lashing balls all over the yard. Eight hits so far for the Mets. And six have been extra base hits. One, two to Jones. Misses the outside corner with a fastball. Two and two. There's lots of new stuff in tomorrow's Newsday. Look for Jumble, Dave Barry, and the new expanded Monday Business and Technology Report. Plus an extra big action-packed sports section. Get Newsday tomorrow. Two-two from Kyle. Swing and a miss and a pitch in the dirt. Picked up by Hernandez, fires to first, and that ends the inning. Second strikeout for Daryl Kyle. He gets the sign out, one, two, three. Three in the books now at Shea. Mets seven, Cardinals two on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Sports Radio 66. Through three innings, the Cardinals two runs, two hits, and no errors. The Mets seven runs, eight hits, and no errors. And Bobby Jones will take on the heart of the St. Louis batting order in the fourth. Starting with Jim Edmonds, who clocked a two-run homer in the first inning, the Cardinals' first home run of this series. St. Louis had 235 home runs during the regular season, a club record and second in the league behind the Houston Astros playing in that fan box known as Enron Field. And the Cardinals then hit six home runs in three games against the Braves in their series sweep in the division series. So for the Mets to have kept the Cardinals in the ballpark for the first three games was a pretty mean feat. Edmonds, who had 42 home runs during the regular season, two more against Atlanta, now has his third of the postseason, a two-run shot in the opening inning. The pitch by Jones misses outside, one ball, no strength. The out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by buyandhold.com. Invest for the long term because trading can be hazardous to your wealth. The infield is stepped to the right against Edmonds. The outfield is stepped to left. And a call strike letter high, one and one. In Seattle this afternoon, Denny Nagel had himself a 2-1 lead through four innings. But then the Mariners jumped on Jeff Nelson for five runs in the fifth. And the Mariners beat the Yankees 6-2 to stay alive. A 1-1 pitch taken inside, two balls and a strike. Alex Rodriguez gave the Mariners the lead with a base hit. And then Edgar Martinez and John Olerud went back-to-back -back off Nelson in that big fifth inning. And the Mariner bullpen held it from there. Jose Paniagua, Arthur Rose, and Kazuhiro Sasaki finishing up for Freddy Garcia. 2-1 pitch in the dirt, bouncing away. 3-1, so the Yankee lead in that series is now three games to two, and they'll have to come back to New York to play on Tuesday night. And El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, will pitch against John Halama in game six, Tuesday night in the Bronx. Then if necessary, they would play game seven on Wednesday night. Mets, if they go back to St. Louis, will play a day game on Wednesday in Game 6. That would be at 418 in the afternoon. 3-1 to Edmonds and a high fly ball center field. Pretty deep. Back goes Peyton near the warning track. He's got room, and Peyton makes the catch for the first down. Edmonds gave that a long ride to left center field, but Peyton, who usually plays shallow, this time was playing deep enough that getting back there was a breeze, and Jones has his first down of the fourth. He's now retired nine in a row. And of the nine, six have come on outfield fly ball. Jones is generally a fly ball pitcher, and that is certainly holding up in the game today. Here's Will Clark, who fly down deep to Peyton in center field his first time up. Will now 5 for 11 in this series. A rejuvenated player since coming to the St. Louis Cardinals. Will, in the late 80s and early 90s, was considered one of the best hitters in the entire game. Last couple of years, injuries have robbed him of effectiveness, and he was not a world beater with the Orioles the first four months this year, taken for a call strike. He was hitting right around 300, but he wasn't hitting for much power. And all of a sudden, he came to St. Louis, his first at bat at Bush Stadium as a Cardinal. He hit a home run, and he went on to hit 11 more in two months. The 0-1 pitch to Clark, missing the outside corner 1-1. One one. Will is now 36 years old. He'll be a free agent at the end of the year. And with Mark McGuire expected to recover from his knee injury, it's going to be hard to envision Will Clark in a Cardinal uniform next year. And yet, in these two months, he's become the heart of this Cardinal team. 
The 1-1 one, one curveball in for a call strike one and two. The St. Louis people talk a lot about the chemistry of their ball club and how much Will Clark has had to do with that since his arrival. Well, he's helped them an awful lot. And I don't know what they're going to do. They wouldn't play him if they had him. I'm sure Will's going to want to go somewhere next year where he can play. And certainly his performance late this season will help him get a job somewhere. Jones ahead of the one and two. Now Bobby delivers. Up and away with a fastball. Two balls and two strikes. At his age, Gary, he can't afford to just sit around and be a backup player. He's got to stay, in the, stay where he can play every day. Well, you know, it's interesting. If he had come here and McGuire had gotten healthy faster, Clark probably wouldn't have played very much. But as it turned out, McGuire's knee injury was worse than anybody feared. And Clark played almost every day. 2-2 pitch and a high drive. Deep left center field. Racing back is Peyton to the warning track. Back at the wall out of here. Will Clark with an opposite field home run. His second home run of this postseason, and now it's a 7-3 Met lead. Now Bobby Jones had been giving up a lot of long fly balls, but he had retired nine in a row. That long fly ball cleared the wall in left center field, and now it's a 7-3 Met lead. Well, the Cardinals, who had not hit a home run in this series before tonight, have now hit two. Edmonds a two-run shot in the first inning. And now Clark goes the other way and hits one out here in the fourth. Ray Lankford, the batter, with one out and nobody on. Lankford struck out his first time up. Jones delivers. On the outside corner, a strike, nothing and one. The Cardinals have only three hits in this game, but they've all been extra base hits. They've got enough power. They can come back against you. You've got to be careful. Without question. It is still very early in this game. The 0-1 to Lankford. Fastball taken high. One ball, one strike. Bobby Jones not nearly as sharp in this game as he was against the Giants last Sunday. In that game, he was so perfect with his pitches. Inside corner, outside corner, and everything at the knees or below. Not tonight. The 1-1 pitch taken below the knees by Langford, two balls and a strike. You look over the course of Bobby, the, Bobby's career the last few years, and he gives up far more fly balls than ground balls. And that has certainly been the case tonight. There's not been a single ground ball against him with the exception of a sacrifice bunt. The 2-1 pitch and a high fly ball hits the left field. Benny Agbayani standing his ground waiting for it to come down. And Benny makes the grab. There's the second out. So the fly ball barrage continues. Two out and nobody on in the fourth. And now Fernando Tatis will come up. Tatis did a long fly ball to right center his last time up. And Timo Perez made a terrific play to race over, cut in front of Jay Payton and catch that ball at the edge of the warning track. Seven fly ball outs for the Met outfielders already in this game. Seven of the first 11 outs recorded by Bobby Jones. Pitch to Tatis and a curveball low outside, one ball, no strength. Tatis lost his job heading into the postseason because of ineffectiveness and the solid play of Placido Polanco. But Polanco's hamstring acted up. Tatis got a shot to play in game number two, and he's begun hitting again. The 1-0 pitch, call strike on the inside corner, one and one. Tatis missed two months earlier in the season with a groin injury, and he never seemed to be right. And then particularly struggled in the month of September when he was striking out nearly every other at bat. Jones with a 1-1 pitch. Ground ball hit to third base. Ranging wide is Ventura. He's got it. Throws it across the first. Good stretch by Zeal. And they get Tatis to end the inning. The Cardinals get a run on the Clark home run. One hit and nobody left. Medal of the fourth now at game four. It's the Mets seven. The Cardinals three on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Accounting. Fernwell speaking. Old fourth inning, the Mets will send up the top of the batting order against Darrell Kyle. Demo Perez, who already has two hits, a stolen base, and two runs scored, will lead it off for New York. The WFAN Mets Radio Network salutes Timberman's Local Union 1536 as the New York Carpenters Labor Management Fund members of the game. Darrell Kyle took the mound with a 2 0 lead tonight, but after the Mets had sent four batters to the plate, that 2 0 lead was gone. Perez doubled. Alfonso doubled. Piazza doubled. Ventura doubled. And after Zeal grounded out, Agbayani doubled. And the Mets with five doubles in one inning set a National League Championship Series record and set an LCS record as well with five extra base hits in one inning. Perez 
single to left center his last time up after doubling to right center his first trip. Mike James is up in the Cardinal bullpen. And Perez takes up and away. One ball, no strikes. Kyle faced the lower third of the order in the third inning. And got the side out one, two, three. And he'll try and build on that here. There is a left-hand batter. Tatis way in at third. The 1-0 pitch. He runs up in the batter's box. Takes a strike. That was going to be one of those run up and slap the ball attempts by Perez. He was not looking to bunt. He was thinking of trying to slap one. That's a move that you don't see often anymore, but he has really run with it. And he'll do it once every two or three games. The 1-1 to Timo, and a curveball misses high, and Fowl's been very inconsistent with that curveball here tonight. One of the reasons he's been hit so hard. He's been falling behind on the count with the curveball. He's had to come in with the fastball. The Mets have sat on it, and they have drilled it. The other mistake he made was to Zeal when he tried to throw a sidearm curveball on 0 2, hung it, and Zeal doubled in two runs. The pitch, and again, Timo runs up this time thinking about a punt that he takes inside and low. Three balls and a strike. Timo is really interesting. He played four years in Japan. He's from the Dominican Republic, so right now he speaks better Japanese than he does English. Very little English yet for Timo. The 3-1 from Kyle, right down the middle with a fastball, 3-2. Well, one thing about playing in Japan, you learn an incredible work ethic there. Unlike the uh, established U.S. players that go over there and can kind of skip those training drills, the Japanese players are required to run and work incredible hours. 3-2 pitch, curveball, a little bit low, ball four, and Perez draws a walk. And Kyle very upset with that call by Dale Scott. He thought he had dropped that one right over the heart of the plate. But Scott said it was low, and Timo's aboard for the third straight time. And Dave Duncan really snapping at Dale Scott from the St. Louis dugout. He's very upset about that last call. And you watch the pitch on replay, and you can understand why. That curveball looked like it sliced right over the heart of the plate. Well, the Mets have a leadoff man on here in the fourth, looking to expand on a 7-3 lead. And here's Alfonso, who doubled home a run in the first inning, his eighth run batted in of this postseason. And Alfonso is now hit in 10 straight postseason games, dating back to last year. Carlos Hernandez, the catcher, will go out to the mound. And yeah, they have Mike James warming up in the bullpen now. Will Clark coming in from first base as well, and they may be killing some time here. By the way, how many pitches? Kyle throws so far. 68. That's terrible. He, it wasn't horrible that first inning when he gave up four runs. He threw only 21 pitches. And a tougher time of a pitch-wise in the second inning when he gave up three runs. Now Duncan is on his way to the mound. And let's see if he plans to make a change here. The Cardinals appeared to be killing time. So it may be that they were trying to get Mike James ready. Kyle probably got a bad break on that 3-2 ball four call. And yet, the way he's gone tonight, it may be that they won't go any further with him. Duncan talking at the mound right now. And Kyle appears resigned to coming out of this game. I think they're just killing time and waiting for James to throw a few more warm-up pitches. Kyle's kicking at the rubber as though he knows he's coming out of the game. Now the home plate umpire, Dale Scott, is going to walk out and ask Dave Duncan to make a decision. And Duncan may be waiting to get some shots in on Scott about that last call as much as anything. And now he's at the mound, and Mike James will come into the game. We're in the fourth inning. We'll take a break. 7-3 to three New York on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Well, you can kind of see this coming. Darrell Kyle threw a curveball that the Cardinals were convinced was strike three to Timo Perez. It was called ball four by Dale Scott. And Dave Duncan, the pitching coach of the Cardinals, really gave it to Scott from the third base dugout. And when Duncan came out to remove Daryl Kyle for the game, he waited for Scott to come to the mound. And then he started jawing at him about the ball, ball four call. Well, before Duncan left the field, he really got into it with the second base umpire, Steve Ripley. And they went nose to nose for a while. And finally, Tony La Russa had to come out. And Bruce Fremming, the crew chief, had to come over from third base to separate Duncan and Ripley. La Russa is just now walking back into the dugout. Bob, I don't know if Dave Duncan got ejected from this game or not, but he really went at it with the second base umpire, Steve Ripley, there for a while. Yeah, you're right. He waited for him to get out there so he could get a piece of him. I'm not sure whether he's thrown out or not either. I guess 
we won't know until we hear from the press box. But Dave Duncan went at him after him about as hard as you can go. Well, Ripley was pointing his finger in Duncan's face. I think that Ripley said something to the effect of, get the heck out of here. You're not supposed to be standing around anymore when James came to the mound. And boy, Duncan and Ripley really gave and got it. LaRusa had to come out of that. LaRusa had words with Ripley as well. So Mike James has come on to pitch. Bailing out Daryl Kyle, who leaves after three innings plus. He allowed eight hits, seven runs so far. Walked three, one of them intentional, struck out two. That's of a seven to three lead, and the Gardner Alfonso will stand in against Mike James. James has been completely ineffective in this series so far. This is now his third appearance. Perez at first and nobody out. Alfonso one for two on the night. James a long time in the stretch and then steps off. James came on in relief. In game number one of this series, pitched a 1 2 3 eighth inning, and he hasn't gotten anybody out since. Gave up two home runs in the ninth inning of game one, and then hit Mike Gornick with a pitch. Came into the ninth inning yesterday, faced two batters, gave up a single and a walk. So six straight hitters have reached base against him. The pitch to Alfonso, and he takes on the inside corner a strike, nothing in one. James had a good season for the Cardinals, kind of a comeback season for him after injury had plagued him for the two prior seasons. Wanda pitching in 51 games for the Cardinals. Pitching to a 3.16 ERA, but this has not been a good series for him. Zinia and Renteria shortened up a double play depth. Perez already has a stolen base in the game. Clark holds him at first. The outfield straight away. And a throw to first, and Timo goes diving back in. Mike James on early in relief for Daryl Kyle. LaRusso stayed with Kyle longer than you might have anticipated after Kyle gave up seven runs in the first two innings. Kyle pitched a 1-2-3 third, but then the leadoff walk here in the fourth, chasing him from the game. Alfonso was now hit in 10 consecutive postseason games, dating back to last year. The 0-1, the runner goes, and a drive in the air to right center field, chasing over is the right fielder, Drew, and he makes the catch, and Perez will retreat to first base. That ball hung up for J.D. Drew getting over in the gap in right center field. And Alfonso is retired for the first down. One out and one on. And here's Mike Piazza. Mike hit a ball about as hard as you can hit one of the opposite field his first time up, driving it over J.D. Drew's head for a double. He hit it so hard that Alfonso, who was on second base, had to stop at third. Then, with a runner at third base in the second inning, Piazza was intentionally walked. Turned out to be a bad move. The Turo walked, Zeal doubled, and Agbayani singled, and the Mets had a three-run inning. Pitch to Piazza. Runner goes. It's a pitch out. Throw to second by Hernandez on target, and Vigna tags out Timo Perez. So the Cardinals guessed right there. Perez trying to steal on the first pitch to Piazza, and he's gunned down two to four. So Timo, who had the first stolen base of the series for the Mets, his last time up, now the first caught stealing for the Mets in the series. Good job of throwing by Carlos Hernandez. Mike Matheny, the Cardinals' number one catcher, one of the real terrific throwing catchers in baseball, but he's out with an injury now. Uh, anytime you pitch out, you should throw out the runner, and the Cardinals pitched out, and Hernandez made no mistake. Two out and nobody on, one and oh, the count to Piazza. And the pitch by James, fastball strike on the inside corner. One ball, one strike. The Cardinals three runs and three hits. The Mets seven runs and eight hits. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's try to take a three games to one lead in this best of seven series. It's game five tomorrow night. The infield turned toward the left, but the outfield playing straight away against Mike. The one-one from James, swing and a miss and a good slider. One ball and two strikes. Well, Daryl Kyle, we mentioned it right at the outset. Tony LaRusso rolling the dice and putting out a pitcher who does not pitch well on three days rest. And he pitched him on three days rest. And it didn't work. Kyle had a 6.66 career ERA on three days rest. And it'll be worse than that after this game. The one two to Piazza. Slider missing outside. Two balls and two strikes. Robin Ventura waits on deck. Well, the Mets came into this game with a postseason batting average this year of 222 as a team. They have certainly gone to work on that in the game tonight. The 2-2 to Piazza, and a high fly ball, deep left field, forget it. That is way, way out of here. Mike Piazza with a monster home run into the left field bullpen. 
his second home run of the series, and Piazza buried that pitch into the back of the bullpen in left field to make it 8-3 to three New York. A classic shot off the bat of Mike Piazza. And Mike James has rocked again, the third home run he has given up in this series. Wow, that was a major league home run. Can you say no doubt about it? <laughs> what a bomb by Piazza. Well, Mike had a tough game at the plate last night. He has certainly made up for it tonight. Here's Robin Ventura, who's doubled and walked and driven in a pair. Check swing ground ball to third, moving in Tatis to grab it. Swings it over to first in time to get Ventura. That retires the side, but the Mets get a run on the Piazza bomb. One ball, one the run, one hit, and nobody left on. Four of the books now in Shea, Mets 8, Cardinals 3 on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Pick up some great tasting Snapple iced teas and fruit drinks in a wide room. We go to the fifth inning here at Shea Stadium. As Mike Timlin begins to loosen to the St. Louis bullpen. Bob Murphy, Will Rogers might have said that reports of Mike Piazza's October demise have been exaggerated. He is in a groove right now. He has hit two shots in this game tonight. One to right and one to left. The one to right was a screaming line drive. J.D. Drew, the right fielder, never had a chance. And the one he hit the left field, that went to the back of the bullpen. Monster fly ball hit by Mike Piazza. Mike had 38 home runs during the regular season. That's his second postseason home run. J.D. Drew is the batter facing Bobby Jones. That's with a five-run lead at 8-3. to three. And the pitch a little high, one ball and no strikes. I think I said Will Rogers. I meant Mark Twain. Oh, okay. He was the guy who said reports of my death have been exaggerated. I grew up not far from where Will Rogers lived. And the 1-0 delivery on the outside corner for a tall strike. We are told that Dave Duncan, the pitching coach, was ejected. What we don't know is since one of the umpires did it. I think it was Steve Ripple. Probably so. The 1-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Good-looking curveball by Bobby Jones. I think what was happening was that Duncan was going after the home plate umpire, Dale Scott. Ripley heard what he said, and Ripley threw him out of the game. So Dave Duncan is out of the game. Now the 1-2 pitch by Bobby Jones. Missed the inside corner. Two balls and two strikes. Mets eight runs on nine hits. The Cardinals three runs on three hits. J.D. Drew, left-hand hitter. The Cardinal right fielder waiting. As pull foul, no play. That'll roll over into the home dugout. During the regular season, the Mets won six out of nine from St. Louis. Now trying to make it three out of four in the postseason. Foul ball, that's back up into the mezzanine and no play. That's one of the first six games they played with St. Louis this year. Hey, the Mets match up well against the Cardinals. They have the good left-hand pitching to stop that real good left-handed hitting. Bobby Jones checking it out now with Mike Piazza. A little bit low, full count, three and two. Bobby gave up a double and a home run in the first inning. Says that he's allowed a home run by Will Clark. So it's eight to three, Mets leading, we're now in the fifth inning. And the three two pitch, line drive to right center, base hit. Single to right center for J.D. Drew. So he's opened the fifth inning with a base hit. And it will bring up Carlos Hernandez, the catcher. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, contact your local Remax office at 1-800-REMAX New York. Nobody in the world sells more real estate than Remax. Hernandez flied to ride his previous time at bat. Now Bobby Jones, having given up his fourth hit, delivers to the plate. Ground ball past the mound into center field, a base hit. 
Drew is around second. He'll stop there. And now the Cardinals have two men on. Ground single. Bobby Jones almost flagged that down. Didn't get the glove down quite in time. And it sailed into center field. Now the pitcher is due up. He's getting for the St. Louis Cardinals. Number 24, Eric Davis. Eric Davis will be the pitch hitter. Davis will bat for Mike James. So now the Cardinals are trying to get something underway here. They have runners on first and second and nobody out. Cardinals now with five hits in the game. And Eric Davis will step in. The veteran outfielder, right-hand hitter. And with Bobby Jones giving up two, uh, two straight hits here in the fifth inning, Glendon Rush will get up in the Mets' bullpen. Eric Davis batted over 300 for the season. Batted 303. And the pitch on the way. Just missing one ball, no strikes. Glendon Rush has been a starting pitcher throughout his career. Pitched in relief yesterday, and there was a question whether he'd be able to go back-to-back -back days. He said, no problem, I'm available. And there he is now up in the bullpen for New York. I thought he threw the ball well when he relieved yesterday. As he did his first time out in relief in the postseason. Bobby Jones would love to get a double play here. Lined foul back into the crowd and out of play. One ball and one strike to Eric Davis. Cardinals need to get a big inning underway. Cardinals have a ball club that can hit. So they can storm their way back in a lot of ball games. Uh, one thing about it, Bobby Valentine is not going to waste any time getting Bobby Jones out of there if he has to. You've got a, a five-run lead. You better win the game. Oh, you've got to win that game. You can't lose it. You have to use everybody in your bullpen if necessary. One ball, one strike on Eric Davis. The pitch by Bobby Jones. Inside low, two balls and one strike. You're wondering why... Tony La Russa would use a right-hand batter in this spot. It's because he only has one left-hand hitter in his dugout, and that's his third-string catcher, Rick Wilkins. All his left-handed firepower is already in the game. Eric Davis still runs well. He would not be an easy man to double up. Not the speedster he once was, but he still has good speed. Two balls and a strike on Eric Davis. Batting for the relief pitcher, Mike James. Mets have a lead of 8-3. to three. And we're in the fifth inning. Now the count is two and one. Hit hard. And that is a fair ball. Base hit down the left field line. Rounding third coming in is J.D. Drew. He will score. The throw going into second. And it's a two-base hit for Eric Davis. Now it's an eight-to-four ball game. Eric Davis delivers a smashing double. He had a screaming ground ball right over the third base bag. Bruce Kirby said it's just fair. Very, very close to being a foul ball. That ball went over the bag in the air. That's one of the toughest calls for an umpire. When it's fair before the bag, foul after the bag, and he has to figure out where it went over in the air. Looks like Bruce made a good call. No argument from Robin Ventura, who was the closest to it. Now here come the Cardinals. They're trailing by four runs now. Nobody out, and Fernando Vina is the batter. Three hits in a row off Bobby Jones here in the fifth inning. A single to right center by J.D. Drew. A single to center field by Carlos Hernandez. And now a double, and here comes Dave Wallace, the pitching coach of the New York Mets. Fernando Vina, left-hand batter, is up. So they might be going to the bullpen for Glendon Rush. And there's the sign going to the bullpen, and Glendon Rush will come in. We'll step out on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. 25-year-old starting pitcher Glennon Rush called on now by Bobby Valentine to come on in relief. And now the Cardinals are pretty close to getting right back in this ballgame. Runners on second and third and nobody out. A base hit and the Cardinals would trail by only two runs. Well, Glennon Rush has faced five batters in the postseason. He struck out three of the five. He hit Will Clark with a pitch yesterday and then he got Mark McGuire out on a fly ball with the bases loaded. So he has been very impressive pitching and relief in this postseason. As a starter this year, Glennon won 11 and lost 11. Now the hitter is Fernando Vina standing in against the left-hander Glennon Rush. The question about Glennon is going to be how is he going to fare pitching back-to-back -back days, something he has never done before. Carlos Hernandez is on third. Eric Davis on second and nobody out. 
Now the stretch by Glennon Rush. And the fastball over at the knees, strike one ball. He's in a spot where he really needs to throw strikes and throw them right down. Most important thing for a lead, really pitcher when he comes into this situation, you got to get that first hitter out. Nobody out right here for the Cardinals. They've started the inning with three hits in a row. Strike ball in the outside corner. He came with a high sidearm delivery, picked off the outside corner. And now Fernando Villa is pressing with the plate umpire, Dale Scott. Rest with a two strike count on Fernando Villa. Now the left hander is ready. And the pitch. Ground ball foul down the first baseline. No play. So the count remains at strike two on Fernando Villa. Top of the Cardinal batting order is very, very talented. They have a lot of hitting in the top half of that order. Edgar Renteria is the on-deck batter. And then you come to Jim Edmonds, the center fielder. Mina waiting on a two-strike pitch. Off the outside corner, one ball, two strikes. Rush has worked more and more with that sidearm delivery against left-hand batters as the season has gone along. Glendon, for the most part, did not do well getting left-hand hitters out during the regular season. He's done far better so far in the postseason. Yeah, he was more effective against the right-hand hitters. Mina is a left-hand hitter who batted 300. Now, Rush is ready. And he misses high, but he misses the count. Two balls and two strikes. This game could become a squeaker in a hurry. At one point, the Mets had a 7-2 lead. Now their lead is down to four runs at 8-4. And runners on second and third and nobody out. The count is 2-2 two and two on Fernando Vina. The pitch fouled off. Just got a piece of that. Jammed with a good fastball by Glennon Rush. Glennon Rush has turned out to be a terrific trade for the Mets. Steve Phillips got him in a deal with Kansas City. Two balls and two strikes on Fernando Vina. And the pitch on the way. Breaking ball, strike three. He got him. And Villa is fussing with the plate of Fire Neil Scott. What a great curveball by Glendon Rush. Villa tried to stop the swing, but it cut right over the heart of the plate. And it didn't matter that he stopped the swing. Tony La Russa has to come out to protect his player. He doesn't want Villa thrown out of the ball game. Well, I'm sure what Villa is thinking is that it was a very similar pitch to the one that was called ball four against Timo Perez. In the last inning, this time it was called strike three. Very similar curveball that fell over the heart of the plate. Now one man away, and the hitter is Edgar Renteria. Renteria has sacrificed and popped a fly ball to short left field. Renteria, a good hitter. Renteria, six for 14 in the series. Foul ball hit back into the crowd. No play. Glendon Rush has now come into three games in relief in the postseason, and in each of the three, he has struck out the first batter to face it. Boy, that is so big. Struck out Russell Davis in the first game in San Francisco. Struck out Jim Edmonds, his first batter last night. And he strikes out Fernando Vigna, his first man up today. And if he can get this center out without a run score, he'll have a chance to get out of the inning. Now the pitch on the way. Ground ball foul. Boy, that was hit hard. Goes in behind the third base coach, Jose Okindo. Now Rush has a two-strike count on Edgar Renteria. One of the surprising things about Rush this year was his ability to strike out batters. He averaged better than seven strikeouts per nine innings. He's not a hard thrower, so you don't expect strikeouts from him. But he can give them to you. He'd love to get one right now. Renteria, not an easy hitter to strike out. Now the stretch by Glennon Rush. Just missed, almost had it. That just missed the inside corner, a breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. The crowd very much into this right now. They can see the tenth moment. Second and third and one man out. Renteria has the bat cut. Ground ball foul down the third baseline, no play. 
So the count remains the same. One ball, two strikes. And Rush coming inside with the last two pitches to Renteria. That's something that Glendon has learned uh, from Al Leiter this year. Leiter loves to work inside of the right-hand batter, throwing that cutter. And Rush has started doing the same thing. It's been much more effective for him than using just the outside part of the plate. Let's have a four-run lead, but it's uneasy. The moment right now. And the one-two pitch. Low outside, two balls and two strikes. So the count is even now at two and two on Edgar Renteria. In 97, Renteria was with the Marlins. Knocked in the winning run of the seventh game of the World Series. Lended Rush with his back to the runner at third. Swing and a high fly ball hit the right field. Getting under the ball as Perez makes the catch. Here comes the runner. The throw coming in, and it's cut in time. A run scores. Now it's 8-5. to five. Edgar Renteria delivers a fly ball, a sacrifice fly to right field. Pretty close play at the plate. Well, Mike Piazza could not pick that ball up cleanly. Had he been able to get it on the first grab as it came in on a couple of quick hops, he might have had a shot at the runner Hernandez, who's not that fast coming from third, but it was difficult for Piazza to pick up that ball. And by the time he smothered it and fell on top of it, Hernandez came in standing across home plate. Now we have an 8-5 to five ball game. That's at a 5-run lead. Now it's a 3-run lead. And the hitter is the center fielder, Jim Edmonds. Edmonds hit a 2-run homer in the first inning. Fly to deep center field in the fourth inning. Ground ball hit hard. Base hit going into right field. It will drive home a run. And this is now an 8-6 to six ball game. Jim Edmonds with a hard single to right field. Brings home Eric Davis. Edmonds now has three RBIs in the game. So this lead is disappearing in a hurry. That's five RBIs in the last two games for Edmonds, who now has 12 for the postseason. He was the big RBI producer for the Cardinals during the regular season, and nothing has changed. Now Will Clark is the tying run at bat. For the St. Louis Cardinals, they've now scored three here in the fifth inning. Lennon Rush looking in to get his sign. And the throw to first base is not in time. So the Cardinals now, six runs on seven hits. The Mets, eight runs on nine hits. And St. Louis getting right back into this ballgame. This is anybody's battle right now. Will Clark hit a home run his last time at bat. Ground ball down to first base. Grabbed by Zeal, he'll run to the bag. The inning is over. So a good job by Glendon Rush. Cardinals score three runs, four hits, and they left one man on. Now we're halfway. Run relief pitcher Mike Timlin from the Baltimore Orioles to help out in the stretch run, and he certainly did that. Timlin was in 25 games, three and one with a 3.34 earned run average. 29 and two-thirds innings and 30 hits allowed. So Mike Timlin, a right-hander, takes over the Cardinal pitcher. Timlin was the losing pitcher in game two. An unearned run in the ninth inning. Gave up the base hit to Jay Payton that drove home the run after Will Clark's error had set the stage. The only time Timlin has pitched so far in this postseason. He struggled against the Braves as well. He's given up six hits in two and two-thirds innings in the postseason. Bobby Jones will be charged with five runs. Bobby goes out after pitching four innings, allowed five runs and six hits. Making six runs. Eight to six to score in the ball game. As at one time we're leading seven to two. Now they have a two-run lead. It's down to eight to six. And we're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Todd Zeal will be up against Mike Kimlin. So the Mets bullpen, Gary, is going to need to be very effective here tonight if the Mets are going to win this ball game. Well, I'm sure just about everybody's going to be in there before this one is over. Yeah, this will be quite a struggle. Both sides will probably use everybody they've got before we play nine innings. And the bullpen will have to be very good here tonight if the Mets are to get their third victory in this league championship series. Todd Zeal has one for two. Todd doubled to drive two runs in his last time at bat. And the pitch by Timlin 
let her high for a straight call. It'll be Zeal, Agbayani, and Peyton batting for the Mets in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Lennon Rush, I thought, did an effective job in relief. He allowed one single. Now the pitch on the way. Fly ball hit the right field. A playable. Moving back, J.D. Drew grabs it for the out. So Zeal has been retired, one away. And Biddy Agbayani will come up. Biddy is two for two. You know, it's time for the U.S. Airways home run flyaway inning. Today's contestant, Nancy Steinitz from Carmel. If a bet hits a home run of this inning, Nancy will receive two tickets to anywhere U.S. Airways flies in the continental U.S. Vinny Agbayani, the hitter, and the pitch to Vinny, take it high. Vinny now has hit safely in nine straight postseason games. Vinny tonight is two for two, a single and a double. Let's have eight runs on nine hits. The Cardinals, six runs on seven hits. This is going to be quite a struggle. And the pitch on the way, ground ball foul. Goes into the crowd down the left field line. Cardinals have now used three pitchers. Darrell Kyle worked three innings officially. Mike James worked one, and now Mike Kimlin is on. We are only in the last of the fifth inning. So we have a long way to go in this one. Next pitch on the way. Ground ball is slowly down to first base, picked up by Will Clark. Will steps on the bag, two men down. That ball was hit with a lot of crazy spin on it. So two outs and nobody on now, the home fifth. Jay Payton has struck out and fly to shallow left. So Payton is 0 for 2. The plate umpire Dale Scott going out for a look at the ball. Crowd of about 55,000 here at Shea. Tomorrow night, Mike Hampton will pitch for New York. Pat Hinkton will be on the mound for the Cardinals. Both Hampton and Hinkton won 15 games during the season. Ground ball back to the mound, diving for it and grabbing it. Timlin throws to first, and the inning is over. That's a round one, two, three. So they're stopped completely by Mike Timlin in the fifth inning. At the end of five now, here's Shea. The Mets eight and the Cardinals six on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Sports Radio. Let's go to the sixth inning here at Shea with Gary Cohen. Okay, thanks very much, Bob. Eight to six, New York, as we start the sixth. Lyndon Rush came on in relief in the fifth inning. Struck out Fernando Vina, gave up a sacrifice fly to Edgar Renteria. And then a run-scoring single to Jim Edmonds before getting Will Clark for the final out. All the runs in that fifth inning were charged to Bobby Jones, who was tagged with six runs and six hits in four innings plus. But Rush, I'm sure, would have preferred to strand the runners that he inherited. Instead, they both came in to score. Ray Langford, first man up in the sixth inning, and he racks one in the right field for a base hit. Played on a hop by a jumping Timo Perez, and Ray Langford has started the sixth inning with a hard single to right. And now the Cardinals will get the tying run to the plate with Fernando Tatis coming up. Mets had an 8-3 lead in this game after Mike Piazza hit a bomb into the left field bullpen in the fourth inning. But the Cardinals scored three runs in the fifth. And now a leadoff single by Langford here in the sixth. And Fernando Tatis will stand in. Fly out to deep right center in the second inning. Grounded out to third base in the fourth. Facing the left-hander, Glendon Rush. And the pitch on the way. Fastball misses inside. One ball and no strikes. J.D. Drew, a left-hand batter, is out on deck. No warm-up action in the Mets' bullpen, but that may change in a moment. A little stirring around out there. Alfonso and Bordick set up a double play depth. Zeal in front of the runner at first. The pitch, change up, misses outside. And now Rush behind. Two balls and no strikes. Rush had terrific control during the regular season. Just a shade over two walks per nine innings. Kirk Wendell's going to grab a baseball and start to loosen up now in the Mets' bullpen as things get dicey here in the sixth. The outfield around toward left against the power-hitting Fernando Tatis. 2-0 pitch. Call strike on the inside corner. Two balls and a strike to Fernando Tatis. 
Bobby Jones did not have it tonight. Not the same way he did in his one-hit shutout his last time out. The Cardinals wrapped him around right from the start of the ball game. The 2-1 pitch, changeup, swing and a miss. Great off-speed pitch by Rush, and he gets even two balls and two strikes. Bobby had a stretch in which he retired nine hitters in a row, but of the nine, six hit fly ball outs, and four of those were hit very, very well. So it was just a matter of time, it seemed, before Bobby was going to get hit hard and leave this game. Clark hit a home run, then three straight hits to start the fifth. 2-2 to Tatis, swing and a miss. He got him with a high, hard one. Levin Rush set him up with changeups, and then he came upstairs with a fastball to strike out Fernando Tatis. There's the first out here in the sixth inning. Second strikeout for Rush. One out and one on, and here comes J.D. Drew. First, we'll pause for station identification on the WFAN Mets radio network. NFL, the Giants held off Dallas 19-14. The Jets over New England 34-17. Listen to Imus in the morning tomorrow from 5.30 to 10 on WFAN New York. Gary Cohen, Bob Murphy with you from Shea Stadium in New York. Game four of the National League Championship Series. We're in the top of the sixth inning in a slugfest. The Mets lead the Cardinals 8-6. One out and one on. J.D. drew the batter, and Glennon Rush throws to first, chasing Langford back to the back. Ray Langford, not nearly the base stealer he was earlier in his career. He had only five stolen bases this year. Rush tends to hold runners pretty well. Ventura in on the grass at third. Sidearm delivery. Fastball call strike to Drew. Nothing and one. J.D. Drew got the three-run rally started for the Cardinals in the last inning with a single to right field off Bobby Jones. Drew one for two in the game. Now four for 11 in the series. The outfield is stride toward left. And a toss to first base. Rush stepped off and did not stride toward first. Almost caught Tatis flat-footed. In the outfield, Payton moves a couple of strides further over toward left center against Drew. A left-hand batter. The 0-1 pitch, missing inside. Drew jumping back. One ball and one strike. Carlos Hernandez, the catcher, now standing on deck. Tomorrow night, we join you with Mets Extra at 7.40. First pitch at 8.18. Mike Hampton makes his second start of the series. He was the winner in game one. And he'll face Pat Hinkin, who has not pitched since the end of the regular season. 1-1 one, one to Drew. Sidearm line drive to short. Caught by Bordick. No throw back to first as Tatis scrambles back safely. Not a hard line drive. Hit right at Mike Bordick. And Tatis was able to judge it well enough that he got back to the bag without a throw. Now two out of the inning. And Hernandez will be the batter. The Out of Town scoreboard is brought to you by Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. Carlos Hernandez, one for two, single to center, just past the glove of Bobby Jones, and then scored a run in the fifth inning. Lankford at first and two men down. Glendon Rush, after giving up a leadoff single, trying to work through this sixth inning, protecting a two-run lead. And the pitch by Glendon, fastball outside, 1-0. The Seattle Mariners stayed alive this afternoon on the strength of a five-run fifth inning. They beat the Yankees 6-2. Freddie Garcia went the first five for the win. Denny Nagel took the loss. Jeff Nelson really gave it up in the fifth. Back-to-back -back home runs by Edgar Martinez and John Olerud. And a throw to first not in time. So the Yankees' lead in the series is now three games to two. And they will play game six on Tuesday night at Yankee Stadium. Mark McGuire has come out on deck. The 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss, and an off-speed pitch, one and one to Hernandez. The pitcher's spot is due up next, and so a couple of runs behind now, Tony La Russa will go to his X-factor, if indeed Hernandez is able to keep the inning going. One ball and one strike to Hernandez. Rush faced McGuire in the game yesterday, and got him out on a fly ball with the bases loaded. Toss to first, and Lankford steps back to the bag. Zeal playing off the bag in front of the runner, and Lankford has been taking his lead as close to Zeal as he possibly can. Moving closer to home plate than most base runners will in that spot. The pitch, hit on the ground, down to first, diving stop by Zeal. Gets up, runs to the bag, beats Hernandez there, side retired. Todd Zeal diving to his right to stop the ground ball and making the unassisted put out, and that strands McGuire on deck. No runs, a base hit, and one man left. Middle of the six now at Shea in game four. Mets eight, Cardinals six on the WFAN Mets radio network. Oh, logistics. Ready for... Big out recorded by Glendon Rush on that ground ball by Carlos Hernandez because Mark McGuire was set to pinch hit for Timlin. If Hernandez had gotten on, so McGuire would have been coming to the plate with the tying runs on base. Instead, the pitcher's spot will lead off the next inning. 
Warnick is 0 for 2 in this game, 0 for 8 in the series, and now 2 for 20 in the postseason. London Rush, who's pitched two innings in relief, has come out on deck. Looks like he's staying in. Turk Wendell, who had been loosening up in the last inning, has now sat down. Dimble on a hard-throwing right-hander, works off the stretch, deals to Bordick, and a tied inside, one ball and no strikes. Full house again here at Shea Stadium, and they have watched a real slugfest. The Mets got started with a bang tonight, four straight doubles in the first inning. Here's the 1-0 pitch, up and in with a fastball, 2-0. Mets were trailing 2-0 when they came to bat in that first inning. But Perez, Alfonso, Piazza, and Ventura hit four consecutive doubles. And then after Zeal grounded out, Agbayani doubled. And in case Zeal felt he had missed out on the party, he came up in the second inning, and he doubled. Darrell Kyle went the first three innings plus, allowed seven runs and eight hits. Mike James pitched one inning, allowed a home run by Piazza. 2-0 to Bordick, off the outside corner, and now Timlin behind 3-0. Timlin got the side in order on six pitches in the fifth inning. Mets would certainly like to not make his job quite as easy this time around. And if you get Bordick on, then Rush can come up there and try and help with a sacrifice. The 3-0 pitch, call strike at the, at the knees, 3-1. Rush is a guy who's not had very much success as a hitter, and yet you watch him swing, and you feel as though at some point he's not going to be too bad with the bat. Here's a 3-1 to Bordick, swing and a miss with a fastball in on him. And Timlin runs the count full at 3-2. and two. London Rush during the regular season had only three hits and 50 at-bats. But he looked better swinging the bat late in the year. Did a lot of work with Tom Robson, the hitting coach. 3-2 to Bordick, swinging a foul straight down. And Bordick hangs in there at 3-2. and two. Rush, of course, had spent virtually his entire career in the American League before in this season. Came to the Mets late last season and got in just one game, so. Really, he was brand new to the National League this season and never had a chance to swing the bat much. And I think next year he's going to be a better hitter. The outfield is step to left against Bordick. 3-2 from Timlin. Inside ball four. And Bordick had to bend his back to get out of the way of that. Bordick's already been hit by a pitch twice in this postseason. So there's the first base runner against Timlin. That's out the leadoff man on. For the third time in six innings. And here is Rush. And everybody will expect a sacrifice. The Cardinals to that end will group at the mound. Tatis and Clark come in to talk bunt strategy with Mike Timlin. Well, you really do the opposition a favor always when you walk the leadoff hitter. But when you walk that number eight hitter leading off, you just play right into the offensive team's hands. Now, instead of the pitcher having a give up at bat, he has an at bat where he can help his team with a sacrifice bunt. The Mets have nine hits. The Cardinals have eight. Mets with an eight to six lead as they bat in the bottom of the sixth. Tatis comes in close at third. Timlin looking in for his sign from Hernandez. Rush giving no sign. Now he squares. Timlin deals, bunted and missed. Nothing in one. Fastball right down the middle and Rush kind of jumped at the ball as he attempted to bunt. And he missed it, nothing in one. Timo Perez, who's been on base three times in a row in this game, is standing on deck. The Cardinals have really swung the bats well in this postseason. The Mets held them in check in game one behind Mike Hampton. But other than that, they've been hitting in every game. So you just can't score too many runs. Mets trying to pile it on. Leading eight to six. And Timlin steps off. The Cardinals scored 24 runs in their three-game sweep of the Braves. Eight runs per game. In this series, they scored only two runs in game one, but then five runs in their second game defeat, eight runs yesterday, and six runs already tonight. This team can hit. The pitch on the way to Rush. Bunted up the first baseline, fielded by Clark, and it's a foul ball. Clark picked it up just outside the line. And interestingly enough, it was the first base umpire, Dana DeMuth, who made that call. That should not be his call. Anytime that ball is touched before it gets to first base or to third base, it's the home plate umpire's call as to fair or foul, not the base umpire's call. Clark picked that ball up. And looking at a replay, it did appear to be a foul ball, but Scott never called it. Maybe he was screened by Glendon Rush, and so got the help from Dana DeMuth. 
0 oh, and 2 now to rush, and again he shows bunt. And Timlin steps off. Well, Rush apparently he's set to try and bunt with two strikes. Looks down to Cookie Rojas to make sure the bunt is still on. Tatis is expecting it. He's about 70 feet away at third base. The outfield playing shallow and toward left. Now he shows bunt. Timlin delivers. Bunt it. Fair ball. Timlin grabs it. Bobbles it. His only play now to first in time. Timlin was clearly thinking about throwing to second base. That ball was butted hard and straight back to the mound. But Timlin slipped slightly as he came to the front of the hill and bobbled the ball long enough to take away any play he might have had at second base. So it winds up as a successful sacrifice for Rush. Play going one to four. Now Bordick is second with one out. And Timo Perez will be the batter. Timo has had a terrific night at the plate. And he's also made a couple of good plays in the field. He doubled to right center to lead off the first inning. He singled to left center in the second. And then he walked in the fourth. He has stolen a base. He's scored two runs. Bordick at second with one away, eight to six New York, bottom of the sixth. Tatis plays in on the grass at third. Timo always a threat to bunt. The pitch by Timlin up and away, one and zero. Although this is not a spot where you want Timo Perez trying to bunt for a base hit. You got that runner at second base. You try and drive him in. Perez with a slightly open batting stance from the left side. He danced around in that box. The 1-0 from Timlin hit hard down to third base, but fielded by Tatis going down to a knee. Swings it wide to first and safe is Timo Perez. Well, Fernando Tatis fielded that ball cleanly, playing in on the grass at third base, going down to a knee. But then instead of making a full arm throw, he kind of swung it sidearm and he pulled Clark way off the bag. That'll be a throwing error on Tatis. Bordick holding at second base on the play, and the Mets have two men on. times you say with a play like that well maybe it's the speed of Paris fourth in the air not that time that was just a terrible throw by Tatis he should have had him out by a mile but anybody with lesser speed he probably could have gotten back in the bag and got them first and second and one out so here's Alfonso in an RBI spot Timlin delivers round ball foul outside third as Cookie Rojas dances out of the way Alfonso drove in the first med run tonight with a double over the first base bag his eighth RBI in this postseason. He's now hit in 10 straight postseason games dating back to last year. Since then, he's fly to center, fly to right, one for three. That error by Tatis, the first cardinal error in this series. Runners take a lead at first and second. Vina dashing in toward the bag at second. The 0-1 pitch, we inside and hit him. Alfonso hit by a pitch ball, and the bases are loaded for Mike Piazza. Devlin coming inside. Alfonso tried to turn out of the way, and it struck him. Uh, now the bases are loaded on a walk, an error, and a hit batsman. Uh, Mike Piazza, who hit one on a sight for his last time up in the fourth inning, will come up looking to extend on an 8-6 to six net lead. It is not Dave Duncan who has been ejected, but Tony La Russa who goes to the mound and gathers an entire infield around him. Piazza has swung the bat as well tonight as at any time during the postseason. First time up in the opening inning, he lashed one hard the other way over the head of J.D. Drew for a double. He drew an intentional walk in the second inning, and then he hit one way back in the bullpen in left field. A monstrous home run, his second of the series. Off Mike James in the fourth. The author scored three runs today. He is now six for 12 in this series with four extra base hits. The table is set. Bordick at third, Perez at second, Alfonso at first, and one out. The infield back at double play depth. The outfield straight away. Timlin deals. Low and inside with a fastball. One ball, no strikes. He also had three grand slams during the regular season. Eight to six New York, sixth inning. Timlin working off the stretch. The 1-0 to Piazza. Ron Ball weakly toward third, charging Tatis. He glows, bubbles, picks it up, throws, too late. A run is in, nine to six New York. 
Tatis makes his second error of the inning. A broken back ground ball to third. He came in on it and bobbled the ball. And by the time he recovered and threw it to first, it was too late to get Piazza. A run is in, 9-6 to six New York. And the bases remain loaded for Robin Ventura. That'll be an RBI for Piazza because Tatis had no intention of throwing that ball home. His only play was going to be the first base. But he didn't get that one. Second error of the inning for Tatis. After the Cardinals had done three and a half games without making any errors. Now here is Ventura. Base is loaded one out. Mets now with a three-run lead. Dimlin Deal. Swing and a miss. And a pitch down low. Nothing at one. Robin crashed a two-run double to right center in the opening inning. Walked and scored in the second and then grounded out in the fourth. Perez, a very fast man, is on third. Alfonso at second. And Piazza is on first. Right-hander Matt Morris up in the Cardinal pen. The 0-1 and a high fly ball hit the left field. That should get a run home. Lankford over toward the line is under it. Perez tagging. Lankford's got it. Perez heading to the plate. The throw by Lankford not nearly in time. Perez is in. A sacrifice fly for Robin Ventura. Mets have two runs home in the sixth. And the Mets now have a 10-6 lead. Ventura's third RBI of the ball game as he lifted one to left field to get Timo Perez in with the 10th New York run. So Timo has now scored three runs in the game. Two on and two out, and here is Todd Zeal. And Zeal has continued to swing the bat well tonight. Zeal had a two-run double off Daryl Kyle in the second inning and lined out to right field his last time up. Todd now 6 for 14 in the series, hitting at 429. Alfonso at second, Piazza at first with two down. 10 to 6 New York, bottom of the sixth. What a hitter's night this has been. Timlin delivers, and he misses the inside corner 1-0. Oh. The Mets have scored two runs in this inning without a base hit. A walk, a hit batsman, two errors by the third baseman Tatis, and a sacrifice fly by Ventura. Timlin from the first base side of the rubber. The 1-0 pitch to Zeal. Fastball misses the inside, and he's behind 2-0. Benny Agbayani waits on deck. Everybody here is standing. They've been standing for most of this game, it seems. There's been something to cheer about just about every minute on one side or the other. Mets were up 2-0, or were down 2 to nothing. led 7-2, led 8-3. It was 8-6 before this inning. 2-0 to Zeal. Fastball call strike 2-1. and one. But two unearned runs in for the Mets here in the sixth. And a 10-6 New York lead. It is far from over. Now Timlin staring into Carlos Hernandez, trying to put the brakes on this rally for New York. Runners take a lead at first and second. 2-1 pitch to Zeal is low ball three. So now Timlin has already walked one and hit one in this inning. Is behind on Zeal, who's a great triple hitter. He loves swinging 3-0, 3-1 in a spot where he can zone a fastball. Zeal waving the bat back and forth. Timlin 3-1, runners go, and a high fly ball, deep left center field, back goes Edmonds, back onto the track, he may have room, and he makes the catch. Edmonds catches it on the warning track in deep left center field, and the inning comes to an end. The Mets score two unearned runs without a base hit. And two men left on base. Two errors by the Cardinals. Six of the books now at Shea. Mets 10, Cardinals 6 on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Sports Radio 66, WFAN. Wild ball game here at Shea City. And the Mets try to take a 3-1 lead in the best of seven National League Championship Series. And they now have a 10-6 lead as we go to the seventh inning. Glendon Rush has calmed things for the Mets by pitching two scoreless innings in relief. And now he'll take them out for his third inning as he faces the uh, the pitcher's spot in the batting order. And we'll get a pinch hitter for the Cardinals as Sean Dunstan comes up to lead off against Rush in the seventh. Sean Dunstan, who was such a big part of the Mets' postseason run last year, going back to the Cardinals as a free agent in the offseason. And Dunstan will be the batter here. He's had four at-bats in this series. He got a start in game number two. And he has one hit in four at-bats in this series. Mm -hmm. 
Rush out of the windup and the pitch to Dunstan taken off the outside corner 1-0. This is the third time the Mets have ever scored in double digits in a postseason game. In the first ever National League Championship Series in 1969, the Mets beat the Atlanta Braves in game number two, 11-6 in Atlanta. The 1-0 pitch to Dunstan. Line drive off Rush's glove and into center field, a base hit. Right off the tip of the glove of Rush as he reached out to his right. And Dunstan has a leadoff pinch hit single to start the seventh. And so the Cardinals not going quietly. They continue to mash. This is the third straight inning that St. Louis has had the leadoff man on. And now Fernando Vina coming up. So they scored 11 runs in that game in the 1969 League Championship Series. It was game number two. And then in the second game of the 1973 World Series, they got 10 runs in a 12-inning game against Oakland. And a pitch taken low, one ball, no strikes. That was also on the road. Mets won it 10 to 7 in 12 innings. And so here, the third time the Mets have ever scored in double digits in a postseason game. Vino one for three, a double back in the first. And a fly ball to left field, pretty deep, chasing back Agbayani. He'll get there, and Benny makes the catch going away for the first out of the inning. Benny was playing very shallow against the left-hand batting Vina, and he had to retreat to get it. One out and one on, and Edgar Renteria will come to the plate. The Cardinals, six runs, nine hits, and two errors. Both those errors by Fernando Tatis, and both coming in that sixth inning when the Mets scored a couple of unearned runs to stretch their lead. The Mets, ten runs, nine hits, and no errors. Renteria officially 0 for 1. He's also had a sacrifice bunt and a sacrifice fly against Rush that drove in a run of the fifth. Dunstan at first and one away. Alfonso and Bordick set up a double play depth. And the pitch coming from Rush. It foul back underneath us and out of play. Nothing in one. Matt Morris getting ready in the St. Louis bullpen. He'll be on to pitch in the bottom of the inning. There's lots of new stuff in tomorrow's Newsday. Look for Jumble, Dave Barry, and the expanded... Monday Business and Technology Report, plus an extra big action-packed sports session. Get Newsday tomorrow. Dennis Cook is now up in the Mets bullpen as Rush works here in the seventh. The 0-1 to Renteria. Hit in the air to right field. Over toward the line goes Timo Perez. He'll get there, and Timo makes the catch on the move. Dunstan tags it first. The throw by Perez to second. He may get him. He's out at second base. Timo Perez guns down Sean Dunstan, trying to go from first to second on a fly ball. Nine to six on the double play, and the inning is over. No runs off base hit, and nobody left. Timo Perez does it again. Middle of the seventh at Shea. Then ten, Cardinal six. Right-hander Matt Morris is on to pitch for the Cardinals as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Morris will be making his second appearance of this series. In game number two, he pitched two effective innings and one terrible inning as he gave up two runs and three hits as the Mets rallied in the eighth inning of game number two to take a 5-3 to three lead, only to see the Cardinals tie it and the Mets then win it in the ninth inning. Benny Agbayani leads off for New York in the home seventh inning. Mets with a 10-6 to six lead. Morris fires inside all the way to the backstop. One ball, no strikes. Benny already two for three in this game. Doubles the left center to drive in a run in the first. Single to center and drove home a run in the second. And he grounded out his last time. The 1-0 pitch, line shot foul down the left field side into the photo box. One ball and one strike. Timo Perez picking up his second assist in the last two days by gunning down Sean Dunstan. I'm not sure what Sean had in mind with his team down by four runs. Game number two, he pitched two effective innings and one terrible inning as he gave up two runs and three hits as the Mets rallied in the eighth inning of game number two to take a five to three lead only to see the Cardinals tie it and the Mets then win it in the ninth inning. Benny Agbayani leads off for New York in the home seventh inning. Mets with a 10 to six lead. Morris fires inside all the way to the backstop. One ball, no strikes. Benny already two for three in this game. Double to left center to drive in a run in the first. Single to center and drove home a run in the second. And he grounded out his last time. The 1-0 pitch, line shot foul down the left field side into the photo box. One ball and one strike. Timo Perez picking up his second assist in the last two days 
by gunning down Sean Dunstan. I'm not sure what Sean had in mind with his team down by four runs trying to go from first to second on a fly ball. Not a good idea. Not against Timo. 1-1 one, one pitch, low outside, 2-1. and one. Timo Perez has demonstrated that he has got a strong left arm. They're going to keep running on him because he's a little guy, and he's going to keep throwing people out. He almost threw out a run at the plate earlier in this game. Check swing. Did he go? He went around, and that's the second strike on Agbayani. First base umpire, Dana DeMuth, with the call. Timo made a throw home on the sacrifice fly by Renteria in the fifth inning. The ball handcuffed Piazza. Otherwise, he might have had another assist. Jay Payton waiting on deck. Morris, the former Seton Hall right-hander, 2-2 to Agbayani. Slider missing outside, 3-2. Right, Morris missed all of last year because of Tommy John surgery. Missed the first part of this year. He's been a starting pitcher his entire career, but this year has worked exclusively out of the bullpen and done well. Next year, he'll be back in a starting role. 3-2 to Agbayani. Ground ball chopped towards short to his left. Renteria runs it down. Now the throw to first in time to get Agbayani. One man down. Nice play by Renteria. Hit to go far to his left to chase down that ground ball. One out of the home seventh, and Jay Payton will come to the plate. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, contact your local REMAX office at 1-800-REMAX-NY. Nobody in the world sells more real estate than REMAX. Paid crowd tonight. Another sellout, 55,665. 28 fewer than we had for the game yesterday. Where did those people go? Here's Peyton standing again. Morris deals. Fastball missing high. One ball, no strikes. We'll be here tomorrow night. Oh, okay. Maybe they're still tailgating. There was a lot of that going on in the parking lot before the game today. Good place to go when you're hungry. Jay Payton 0 for 3. Morris delivers. In for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Mike Bordick is waiting on deck. The Cardinals, six runs, nine hits, and two errors. The Mets, ten runs, nine hits, and no errors. Mets were behind two to nothing in this game before they came to bat. Way inside to Payton, two balls and a strike. But they took command with four runs in the first and three in the second off Daryl Kyle. And the Mets have been holding off the Cardinals ever since. Cardinals got it to within two runs at eight to six. But a couple of unearned runs against Mike Timlin in the sixth stretched it to a four-run lead. The pitch slammed in the air along the right field line. Long run over for Drew, but he'll get there. And he makes the catch before he gets to the line to retire Peyton for the second out. So two up and two set aside by Morris in the seventh. And now Mike Bordick will stand in. First, we'll pause for station identification on the WFAN Mets radio network. Seattle beat the Yankees 6-2, so there will be a game six in the ALCS. Giants over Dallas 19-14. Jets bounded New England 34-17. More later on WFAN New York. Gary Cohen, Bob Murphy with you from Shea Stadium in New York. Game four of the National League Championship Series. Mike Bordick takes a strike at the knees from Matt Morris. Nothing at one. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Mets lead the Cardinals 10-6. And John Franco is getting ready in the Mets' bullpen. Lenny Harris out on deck to pinch hit. The 0-1 pitch. Pop foul off to the right out of play. Nothing at two to Mike Bordick. Terrific job in relief by Glendon Rush. He's got three innings. Allowed no runs and three hits. In each of the last two innings, the Cardinals have gotten a leadoff base hit against Rush, and in each case, that runner got no further than first base. 0-2 to Bordick with two out and nobody on. Morris delivers, a little bit low, one ball, two strikes. Bordick walked and scored, leading off in the last inning. Came home on an error by Fernando Tatis, the third baseman. Tatis made two errors in that inning. First going down to a knee and then making a wild throw against Timo Perez. And then mishandling a ground ball hit by Mike Piazza and throwing too late. The outfield has stepped toward left against Bordick. Now Morris with a 1-2 pitch. Ground ball hit to third. Tatis has got this one. Slings it over to first in time and on target. And that gets Bordick and the Mets are down 1-2-3. Nothing across. Seven of the books now in game four. It's the Mets 10, the Cardinals 6 on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Sports Radio 6. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by the authority of Sterling AA Enterprises solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Sterling AA Enterprises. We go to the eighth inning here at Shea Stadium in game number four of the National League Championship Series. 
And after a terrific relief outing by Glendon Rush, his third of the postseason now, Bob Murphy, the Mets, will go to the latter stages of their bullpen trying to protect the lead. John Franco for the eighth. Cabrera Armando Benitez for the ninth. If the Mets hold on to win, Glendon Rush would be the winning pitcher in this ballgame. Rush went three innings. He allowed no runs and three hits. Walked none and struck out two. He was terrific in relief. Now John Franco comes on. Jim Edmonds will lead off in the eighth inning for St. Louis. Edmonds two for three, a single and a home run, and three runs batted in. The out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by Emigrant Savings Bank. When it comes to saving, managing, or borrowing money, you will do better at Emigrant. The Seattle Mariners and the New York Yankees will play a Tuesday night game at Yankee Stadium. Seattle tonight defeated the Yankees 6-2. Freddie Garcia was the winner. Denny Nagel was the loser. Home runs by Edgar Martinez and by John Olerud. They came back-to-back -back in the fifth inning. Now here's Edmund standing in against John Franco. We are now in the eighth inning at Shea Stadium. Strike call to the outside corner. Freddie Garcia got the win. Denny Nagel took the loss. Yankees also used Jeff Nelson, Jason Grimsley, Doc Gooden, and David Cohen. Franco side again on his target. Jim Edmonds is the batter. Paul Strike on the outside corner. Good looking pitch by John Franco. Will Clark will be up next. We're wondering if we might see Mark McGuire. Well, I'm sure Tony LaRusso would love to get the bases loaded and get McGuire up there at the time or up. Well, you know he would. That'd be a dream situation. Franco with a two-strike count on Jim Edmonds. And the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. The ball was caught by Mike Piazza. It looked like it was going to hit the dirt. Well, it was a foul tip and hit Piazza's glove. Popped up in the air and he caught it without it touching any other part of his equipment. If it hits any other part of the equipment, it is not a foul tip third strike, but it hit the glove, popped up in the air, and Piazza caught it without any other aid, so that is a foul tip strike three. Pretty nifty play by Mike Piazza. He's made a few of those in this series. He certainly has. Now with one out and nobody on, the hitter is Will Clark. Will hit a home run in the fourth inning. Will had 12 home runs in the short time he was with the Cardinals after they got him from Baltimore. Left-hander against left-hander. Will Clark hitting against John Franco. Hit hard on the ground, but right at Edgardo Alfonso. He's got it. Close to first, two down. Very quickly, two outs and nobody on. Now Rick Langford is scheduled up. Langford is a left-hand hitter. Probably has more trouble against left-handed pitching than the other Cardinal left-hand batters. Hasn't always been that way with Ray Langford, but this year he hit just 135 against left-hand pitcher. Quality counts. The United Association of Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, and Sprinkler Fitters do the job right the first time. Visit their website at ua.org. Left-hander against left-hander. The pitch by John Franco. Inside high, one ball and no strikes. Just to illustrate the point about Langford, the fact that he's done better in the past against lefties, he's 5 for 15 lifetime against John Franco. Langford hitting at 444 in the postseason series. And the pitch thrown is outside and low. Two balls and no strikes now to Ray Langford. Fernando Tatis, the third baseman, a right-hand hitter. Is the on deck batter. That's with a four run lead. It is 10 to 6. And we're playing in the eighth inning here at Shea. Crowd of over 55,000 on hand. That's over at the knees for a call strike. Two balls and a strike. Tomorrow night, Mike Hampton pitches for New York. Pat Hinkton will be on the mound for the Cardinals. Hinkton, a former Cy Young winner, a 15 game winner this year. The 2 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. And now everybody will be on their feet. 
crowd of over 55,000. Everyone is standing. Just leading by four runs, 10 to 6. We are in the top of the eighth inning. Two and two, the count on Ray Langford. Franco in the set position. And the pitch. Outside and low, ball three. Full count, three and two. Tomorrow night. Game five. Let's have to win tonight and tomorrow night to avoid a trip back to St. Louis. Full count now, three and two, the pitch. Rounder foul, no play. Hit down the first baseline. Cardinals, of course, are hoping to force the series back to St. Louis. It opened in St. Louis, and the Mets won the first two games in St. Louis. Never before has a team come back after losing the first two games at home to make it to the World Series. Well, if the Mets win tonight, be the first win by a home team in this series. Full count now, three and two on Ray Langford. Langford one hit it three times at bat. Singled his last time up. Everybody's still standing. And Langford now steps out of the batter's box. The Cardinals won game three after the Mets had won the first two games. Cardinals won convincingly in game three, winning eight to two. Boy, what a start this game had tonight. Cardinals got two in the first inning. The Mets got four in the first inning. The Mets hitting five doubles in the first inning alone. The score, four runs and take a four to two lead. They've had the lead ever since. Now the pitch, he walked him. Langford reaches on a walk from John Franco. And Fernando Tatis, the right-handed batting third baseman, will be coming up. Well, John hurt himself in game two with a walk. He walked Carlos Hernandez, gave up a base hit, wound up being charged with two runs after leaving the game. He's not had a good series here against the Cardinals so far after a tremendous performance against the Giants. So John needs to get this hitter out. And the pitcher on the way, line drive, blooped into short right for a base hit. Coming in to pick it up is Perez, and now the Cardinals have runners on first and second. That was a bloop single into shallow right field. Well, J.D. Drew is being called back into the dugout. Would they send up McGuire in this spot? Nope, looks like it'll be Craig Paquette. Craig Paquette, a one-time New York Met. Let's trade in Paquette to the Cardinals to get Sean Dunstan to have Sean for the playoff run last year. Well, one thing you know for certain here, if Paquette gets on base, we would see Mark McGuire to bat for Carlos Hernandez. So this becomes a huge spot, very similar to a spot that Franco was in in game one of the series. He had retired the first two hitters, gave up a base hit, faced Sean Dunstan with McGuire possibly on deck in that same kind of a situation. He got Dunstan a line out to left, and it kept McGuire stranded in the dugout. Well, he reached just about the same point in the game here in the eighth inning, where if he can get Paquette out, he can keep McGuire from coming up in a big spot. Armando Benitez is not throwing in the Mets' bullpen at the moment. Paquette can be a pretty tough hitter. One time New York met, and now Armando will get up in the bullpen. The hitter is Paquette. He's a right-hand batter. At 245 during the regular season, with 15 home runs and 61 RBIs. So Franco, after getting the first two hitters out, Gave him a walk to Langford and a bloop single into short right field. Franco is set. And a fastball outside. One ball and no strikes. Runs can score so quickly. 10 to 6. Mets lead by 4. We're in the top of the 8th inning here at Shea Stadium. Franco taking his time, studying the side. And the pitch on the way, swing and a miss. Beautiful change up by John Franco. Swung on and missed by Craig Paquette. But Paquette is hitting for J.D. Drew to get a right-hand hitter up against a left-hander, John Franco. And in the bullpen, Armando Benitez is throwing hard. Being watched by pitching bullpen coach Al Jackson. Now the 1-1 pitch. Slow bouncing ball, tough play. Racing in Ventura. The throw, got him at first base. The inning is over. Oh, what a play by Robin Ventura. 
slow bouncing ball hit toward third. He raced in, picked it up on the offbeat hop, made a perfect throw, the inning is over. No runs, one hit, and two men were left on base. Middle of the eighth inning is Shea, the Mets 10 and the Cardinals 6 on WFAN, Mets Radio Network. Betty Harris will be a pinch hitter, batting for John Franco in the last half of the eighth inning. Craig Pockett stays in the game. He goes to the right field. Matt Morris pitching in relief for the Cardinals. Morris worked a 1-2-3, 7th inning. Lenny Harris has had six hits in six career at-bats against Matt Morris. The last time Morris faced the Mets in game two, Lenny never got out of the dugout. But here, he'll get to face a guy that he's absolutely owned when he's faced him in the past. And he'll be batting for John Franco. And Armando Benitez will pitch the last of the ninth inning. Franco worked an inning, allowed no runs in one hit. Well, there's lots of new stuff in tomorrow's Newsday. Look for Jumble, Dave Berry, and the new expanded Monday Business Technology Report. Plus an extra big action-packed sports section in Newsday tomorrow. And now, Tony La Russa is going out to the mound. We're going to get a pitching change. So we'll be back in just a moment on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. With Bobby Valentine putting up Lenny Harris as a pinch hitter, Tony La Russa comes out and brings in a left-hander, Jason Christensen, and then Bobby Valentine puts up a right-hand batter in Bubba Trammell. So much for Lenny Harris, he's six for six against Matt Morris. That just got taken right off the boards, didn't it? Christensen faced Bubba Trammell in game one of this series and struck him out. So Bubba Trammell will stand in. Christensen is a hard thrower who's had his share of arm trouble. Cardinals picked him up from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Very tall left-hander, stands about 6'6". So Trammell is standing in as a pinch hitter. And the first pitch is high and tight. One ball, no strikes. Timo Perez will be up next. Boy, Timo's had a very exciting night. Double to right center, single to left center. Reached on a walk, reached on an air. Made a great throw from right field to throw out Sean Dunstan. You wonder what he's going to do next. He's the most exciting newcomer in a long time. One ball, no strikes to Bubba Tremble, the hitter here in the last of the eighth inning. And a fastball over, let her high for a call strike. Some have chosen to compare Timo Perez to Melvin Mora. And no knock on Mora because he had a huge impact for the best of the postseason last year. But Timo Perez could do so many more things than Melvin Mora, and he already has. Oh, yes, no doubt about it. No comparison in the talent. They had a breaking ball knee high for a strike call to Bubba Tremel. Boy, and you look forward to having Timo Perez around. He can do just about everything you want to think of. Well, you don't know what's going to happen in the future, but it certainly looks as though the Mets have found themselves a leadoff hitter for a long time to come. Yeah, it sure does. Here's the one-two pitch to Bubba Tremel. That's up and in a fastball from Jason Christensen. And with Derek Bell hurt in the postseason and a free agent at the end of the year, I don't think the Mets had any intention of re-signing Derek for next year. So, got to figure that unless the Mets make a big deal in the offseason, Timo is going to be the right fielder on opening day next year. Yeah, the right fielder and the leadoff batter that they needed so much. Bubba Trammell hits a high fly ball down the right field line. It may be a foul ball out of play. Nope, it stays in play in foul ground and is caught by Craig Paquette. So Trammell has been retired. Ball caught in foul territory by Paquette. One out and nobody on last of the eighth inning. And listen to the crowd hooping and hollering for Timo Perez. Boy, he's exciting. He's fun. Yeah, it's amazing how plans change for a major league team. Nobody would have projected when this season began that the Mets would have an outfield of Agbayani, Peyton, and Perez playing in the postseason. And you can look at these three guys, they could all be fixtures on this team for a long time to come. Well, baseball is such a very long season. You get a lot of changes on every ball club just about every year. And the fish hit hard. And it's a foul ball down the right field line. Oh, he got around on the left-hander. And did he ever cream that? But to have a complete turnover in your outfield, a left fielder who 
and was not projected by many to be a big league player. A center fielder who had four elbow operations and a right fielder who nobody had ever heard of when the season began. I mean, it's extraordinary what's happened here. Oh, it is, and no doubt about it. Amazing story. And a story that makes you feel good for not only for now, but for the future. Timo now waiting on the one-strike pitch. He runs up, slashes at it. Ground ball to shortstop, the throw, and he is out at first base. Oh, was that ever close. He ran up in the batter's box, took a half swing, hit a ground ball to shortstop, and came so close to beating it out. Well, with that running start to first base, all he has to do is in a routine ground ball, and about half the time, he will beat that out. Renteria had to make a quick pick and a quick throw, and he almost didn't get him. He's got that play down fast. It's beautiful. He used it quite effectively at Norfolk this year, and we've seen it more than once already in the big league. He puts the ball in play almost every time. You know who does that? Tony Fernandez does that. Oh, is that right? Two outs and nobody on. Fonzie is the hitter. And Edgardo takes high, one ball and no strikes. But that's the only other player in the big leagues now that I've ever seen try and use that maneuver. Ty Cobb, I think, used to do that. Run up and slap. I didn't see too many of his games. No, that neither did I. But I I, I, I've heard tell. <laughs> And the 1-0 delivery, swing and a miss by Edgardo. Fozzie had a double to right in the first inning tonight. It was an amazing first inning in the small game tonight. Pets came to bat behind 2-0. And before the first inning was over, they had five doubles, scored four runs, and had a 4-2 lead. Mike Piazza has had a big night. Now the pitch is taken two balls and a strike. In the ninth inning, the Cardinals will have the bottom of their batting order coming up. Carlos Hernandez is due to lead off. And since they're behind by four runs, there's no way I don't think that they're going to put up Mark McGuire as a pinch hitter. Not until they he represents the tying run. The 2-1 pitch, foul ball, straight back on the screen. And to count two balls and two strikes. And that's why that play by Robin Ventura was so huge to end the top of the eighth inning. Robin made a very difficult play coming in and throwing out Craig Paquette. Otherwise, McGuire would have been up in that spot with the bases loaded. Yeah, that was a terrific play. Robin makes that play better than anybody in the National League, no doubt about it. Sometimes it's not just what plays you make, it's when you make them. And that was a huge time to make that play. Two balls and two strikes on Edgardo. Reached for and fouled back into the crowd out of play. Game five of the series tomorrow night here at Shea. Mike Hampton, who's already pitched a winning game, will be on the mound. Mike lost his first start in the postseason to the San Francisco Giants. He lost five to one. But his next time out against the Cardinals, he pitched seven shutout innings and was the winning pitcher. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Inside, off the corner, three and two. And significantly, he did that in a game where he didn't have his best stuff. So if you can win and pitch shutout ball in a game where you don't have your best stuff, that's what makes a winning pitcher. And if he can win here tomorrow night, the Mets will not have to go back to St. Louis. Assuming they hold on to win this one. The three-two pitch, high fly ball into shallow right field. Vigna is backpedaling and calling, and Vigna makes the catch. So the inning is over in the eighth. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. At the end of eight innings at Shea Stadium, it is the Mets 10 and the Cardinals 6 on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. Ninth inning here at Shea Stadium, the Mets 10 and the Cardinals 6. Armando Benitez on the pitch in the ninth inning. Joby Ewing will play left field for New York. Carlos Hernandez, the catcher and number eight hitter, will lead off against Benitez. And then Placido Palenco will be a pitch hitter. Well, it's a commitment to quality that wins games. A determination to do things right. In Abaco, that's our focus, too. No matter which team you're on, we'll give you the very best. Carlos Hernandez standing in during the regular season. Armando Benitez set a new Mets club record with 41 saves. The old record had been 38 by John Franco. First pitch, low outside, one ball and no strikes. Game five tomorrow night here at Shea. Mike Hampton pitching against Pat Hinton. 
And the pitch on the way. Missed outside. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Benito's got his first save of this postseason, his last time out in game two, and he struck out Carlos Hernandez to end that game. The 2-0 delivery. That's down the middle for a call strike. The name of the game here is not to allow the Cardinals to get three men on base. If they do that, they'll bring up Mark McGuire as a pinch hitter. Now the 2-1 pitch. Foul ball straight back, no play. Well, the only caveat on that is that they get three men on. It may be in Jim Edmonds' spot. And I don't think they pitch it for Edmonds. Oh, I don't think so either. But if it's in anybody else's spot, you can bet they will. Two balls and two strikes. Now Armando sighting in. And the pitch. High foul fly, probably into the crowd. Looking for a play, Todd Seal, but... He runs out of room. Ball lands in the crowd. No play. And the count holes at two and two. Todd Zeal has been a, a terrific first baseman for the New York Mets. He's only made three errors all year long. He's playing first base like he's been playing there for 10 years. And he made the transition from third to first. Because the Mets had a pretty good third baseman by the name of Robin Ventura. Who wins the gold glove just about every year. The old first baseman had a pretty good day today in Seattle. Two and two is the count. Armando deals. Ground ball toward the middle. And it's off the glove of a diving Mike Bordig in the center field. So that's a base hit. We pause for station identification on the WFAN Mets Radio Network. In the NFL today, Curtis Martin, three touchdowns to lead the Jets past New England, 34-17. The Giants beat Dallas, 19-14. More later on WFAN New York. Bob Murphy with Gary Cohen. A leadoff single by Carlos Hernandez. Placido Palanco, but he's healthy as the regular third baseman, will be standing in as a pinch hitter. Michael hitting a 3-33. And Eli Marrero is going to run for Hernandez at first base. So Eli Marrero, a catcher, is the pinch runner. Fastball. They were not holding the runner on, so he goes to second base. Marrero goes to second. One ball and no strikes now on Polanco. No stolen base. Indifference is the term they use. And the 1 0 delivery. Too high, ball two. Not coming easy for Armando here. Well, he's had a rough postseason and he's had a rough career in the postseason. Needs to get himself together here. The last thing you want to do is be walking people and setting the table because McGuire is looming. He looked good his last time out in relief, but the time before that it was ragged. Two balls and no strikes on Pol Placido Polenko. And the pitch on the way. Too high, ball three. Look out now. The last thing in the world he wants to do is get three men on base. Well, especially with Armando's history of giving up home runs in postseason games. Yeah, he has given up home runs. He's, when he's been hurt this year, it's been by the home run. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Way upside, ball four. He walked him on four pitches. Now the Cardinals have two men on. Well, with Franco having already worked, who's the safety net? Would it be Turk Wendell? Would it be Dennis Cook? If Benitez looks like he's melting down, who would Bobby Valentine go to? I believe it probably would be Turk Wendell. We're going to find out in a moment because someone's about to get up in the bullpen. Yeah, they can't wait around. It's going to be Dennis Cook. So Dennis Cook, the left-hander, the veteran left-hander, will get up. One thing about Cook, in the postseason, he's as good as anybody. Yes, he is. He's been terrific in the postseason. He's now pitched 16 innings in the postseason without allowing a run. The hitter now is Fernando Vina, the little second baseman and leadoff batter, left-hand hitter. Vina has one hit in four times at bat. So it's starting to get serious now for Armando Benitez. And he definitely needs to get somebody out. Vina is waiting down the middle for a tall strike. Martin McGuire standing around the bat rack in the Cardinal dugout. Now, I wonder if Vina gets on, would he send up McGuire to bat for Renteria? He might. He declined to do that in game one. It'll be interesting to see how it develops. And the pitch by Armando. Ground ball toward the hole. Backhand play made by Bordig. Throws to second. Force play. They make the force play at second base. Good play by Mike Bordig. 
going into the pole. He makes the backhand play, and he throws the second in time for the fourth. He had a great play by Alfonso to go sliding across the bag and catch that throw. It was not a particularly good throw by Bordick, and Alfonso had to change direction as he was kicking the bag, reach toward the outfield side to catch that ball. That was an outstanding standing play by Alfonso to save Bordick and air and get the out at second base. Now Renteria is the hitter, first and third, and one man away. In the sixth, New York leading, and the pitch on the way, a call strike on the inside corner. Edgar Renteria, a good hitter. Tonight is 0 for 2 with a sack fly driving in a run and a sacrifice helping to build a run. So Armando with a one-strike count on Edgar Renteria. And the pitch on the way, the runner goes. Swing, and he loses control of the bat. It flies out of his hands. Goes all the way out to shortstop. Cuts are not paying any attention to the base runners. Those runners mean nothing. So that will not be a stolen base. They call that indifference. And now the Redbirds have runners on second and third with one man out. And the count to Renteria is strike two. This is a huge batter here because if he gets on, you get the flying one coming up, and it won't be McGuire. It'll be maybe a more dangerous hitter right now, Jim Edmonds. Jim Edmonds, the center fielder, had 42 home runs during the course of the season, and he has a home run in this ball game tonight. So now Armando needing a strikeout. Here's the stretch and the pitch on the way. Swing and a foul ball, no play. And again, he lost control of the bat. And the bat flies all the way out the shortstop. Well, at least this time he made contact. The first time he swung and missed and lost the bat. This time he just barely got a piece of it. And again, the bat flew out of his hands. And he's going to go get the pine tar rag. So the bat boy goes to get the bat for Edgar Renteria. He uses the pine tar cloth. So his grip should be a little better as he steps back in. With a score 10 to 6. Armando needing a strikeout right here. I think you settle for an out any way you can get one. Any right way now. you can get it. That's Sac the main thing. Sacrifice fly even doesn't hurt him. Now the stretch by Armando. And the pitch. Struck him out. Struck him out swinging. On a sizzling fastball, he strikes out Renteria. Now there are two men away. Score still 10-6. to six. And Jim Edmonds, the center fielder, who had 42 home runs during the regular season, is coming to bat. He has a single and a home run and three RBIs here today. So Jim Edmonds standing in. Mark McGuire standing over by the bat rack of that Cardinal dugout. And if Edmonds got on, would you hit McGuire for Clark? That would be a tough call. I think he probably would. With a right-hander in the game? Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Let's wait and see. Now Benitez in the set position, and the pitch. Oh, strike one. Edmonds wanted to get a look. He was taking all away on that pitch. Mark McGuire is standing with the bat over by the bat rack. Been there for about four innings now yeah, with, his, with his helmet on. Yeah, he's been watching the game from there. <laughs> Runners on second and third, two men down. Here's the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Now Benitez with a two-strike count. That's a one-strike away from winning their third game in the LCS. They will lead three games to one with a victory here today. Armando Benitez checks it out with Mike Piazza. Now the pitch. Way up high. One ball and two strikes. That was not close. Eli Marrero is on third. Fernando Vina is on second. Two men away. We are in the ninth inning here at Shea. Most of the big crowd still right here. Now Benitez is ready. And the pitch. Outside high. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. And obviously Benitez does not want to walk this hitter. A walk would bring up the tying run. In this spot, a walk is the same as a three-run homer. Center fielder Jay Payton playing a stride to left center. 
Jim Edmonds is the batter. And the pitch. High foul fly. No play. That'll wind up in the crowd. So the count stays at two and two on the heavy hitting center fielder, Jim Edmonds. Well, Edmonds got a little jumpy that time. He was way out in front of that fastball. He started to swing almost before he came out of Benitez's hand. Now Mike Piazza telling Armando to take his time, think it through. The count is two balls and two strikes on the slugger. Ten to six Mets. Mets need one more strike. Now that he says it's ready. And the pitch. Low. Ball three, a full count, three and two. Well, he'd been throwing all fastballs to that point. He came with a splitter on two and two, and Edmonds wise to lay off. So now the count has gone full. Three balls and two strikes. Now what will he throw here? Probably the heater. Probably the fastball, although not necessarily. Here's the stretch now by Benitez. Three and two the count, and the pitch. High fly ball, the game should be over. The right fielder Perez is under it waiting, waiting, makes the catch. The game is over, and the Mets win it. The Mets win the game. They now lead the series three games to one with St. Louis. In the ninth inning, no runs. One hit. And two men were left off.